to settle a neighborhood dispute. They live in the same recruiting territory. It's Tallahassee versus Gainesville, a relatively young rivalry that has come of age. Florida wanted to win the Southeastern Conference Championship. They didn't make it, but they missed a perfect season up to now by only eight points. Florida State hoped for national honors. They have missed a perfect season by only 10 points. So today, the rewards are simple and apparent. Florida State versus Florida for prestige, recruiting advantage, pride, and bragging rights. Exciting college football on CBS Sports. Florida Field on the campus of the University of Florida in Gainesville, Florida State Seminoles and the Florida Gators. We expect a lot of noise, a lot of color, and a lot of excitement here today. Some 73,000 fans on hand for the renewal of this series led by Florida 18-6-1. Florida has won the last two games, but the four before that were won by Florida State. The coaches, Charlie Pell of Florida, Bobby Bowden of Florida State, they're all even against each other at two and two. Florida State has a reputation of being able to win on the road, but they've lost three so far this year. And here come the Florida State Seminoles. I'm Lindsay Nelson with Pat Hayden. We expected a lot of noise and a lot of excitement, and we're getting it. Pat Hayden, first of all, let's talk about the football game. It's a little unusual situation with the quarterback at Florida State. Well, Bobby Bowden loves to throw the football, and he has said today that they have to throw the football today to win. His quarterback, Bob Davis, number 10. He's a junior. He didn't get a chance to play much this entire year until the eighth game of the season when we replaced the starter, Kelly Lowry. But he's played very well for the Seminoles. He's completed 59% of his passes. But Kelly Lowry, number 12, is available today. His knee injury is recuperated. He's a big, tough, physical type of guy. Bobby Bowden says he will use them if they need some spark. Well, for this particular game, it's also an unusual situation with a running back. Well, Howard Schellenberg, the, Berger, the head football coach at Miami, says that Roosevelt Snipes and Greg Allen are the best tailback tandem in the country. But you're going to see a little different lineup today. Greg Allen and Roosevelt Snipes are going to play in the same backfield. Greg Allen, the All-American, is going to open up at fullback. Snipes, the tailback, he's going to open up there, and they want to get him the ball in the open field as much as they possibly can. University of Florida has a balanced, solid attack, and it's led by a veteran. Wayne Peace, the quarterback. It's a balanced offense, a well-controlled passing game. Wayne Peace has completed 63% of his passes this year. Likes to get you, get you in those third and three situations, dump the ball off the back, and pick up a first down. You can't talk about Florida without talking about Wilbur Marshall in defense. Well, he is the All-American. Bobby Bowden says you better know where he is because he is Florida's pass rush. Can chase you down from behind and make a lot of big plays. If the game comes down to one point to decide it, it might be the punting of Florida. Well, field position is going to be critical, and Florida really has the key here. They have two punters. Number 13, Ray Criswell's averaged over 47 yards a punt, had 12 punts over 50 yards. And David Nardoni, number six, he's their short punter. He kicks it out of bounds inside the 10-yard line and makes the opposing team go a long way. And that just about sets it up. Florida State versus Florida. Final regular season game of the season before a sellout crowd in Gainesville, Florida. Exclusive present. We're ready for the kickoff by Florida State. Here's Barco with the kick. Hampton is chasing it over, and it's going to go out of bounds and across the end line. Henderson did not offer in the corner. It'll be a touchback, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. The officials are split crew here today, the SEC and the Southern Independents, with Jimmy Harper as the referee. A split crew of officials. 73 degrees, humidity 65%. Northeast 15 miles per hour. The wind could be something of a factor. Forecast cloudy. The sun is trying to break through the overcast. And in the sunshine state, I'm sure it will. Peace brings him up now. Number 15, Wayne Peace. That's Hampton moving over to a slot left. Williams is the fullback to the slot. Hampton. Lorenzo Hampton. Up there to the 29-yard line. Picked up nine. Steve Bloodworth, the walk-on on the right corner. 
Made the tackle. Let's set the backs and receivers for Florida now. At quarterback, number 15, Wayne Peace. He's passed for over 7,000 yards in his career. John L. Williams, the fullback, has averaged 6.3 per carry. Dwayne Dixon, their leading receiver with 40 catches this year. Second down and a yard to go. Wayne Peace, the quarterback, running backs in an eye formation for Florida. And he's handsome. He's got the first and 10 for the Florida Gators out at the 36-yard line. So the Gators draw the first first down of the day. Tackle was made by Ponder. Let's look at the offensive line for the Gators now. Yeah, the man to watch is the center, number 50, Phil Brumley. He's been an all-Southeast Conference selection. First down, 10 yards to go at the 36-yard line. It's Hampton on the tailback. Williams is the fullback. Here's the pitch, Hampton. Hampton slashes down to the 35 to 40 yard line. Pat Milligan from Fort Lauderdale in to make the tackle again of four. That's set the defense now for Florida State. Up front, number 76, Alfonso Carricker. Bobby Bowden said he's the best defensive tackle to play at FSU. And the linebackers, Ken Rowe, weighs only 205 pounds, but he can hit and he can pursue. In the defensive backfield, Eric Riley has four of his team's 10 interceptions. Second down, six yards to go. Florida in possession, again having just begun. He's on his draw play this time. Taken by Williams, John L. Williams, the sophomore from Palatka. Stopped by John McLean from Claremont, Florida. Bobby Bowden, Bobby Bowden, the head coach of the Seminoles. At one stretch starting in 1977, he racked up four consecutive victories over Florida in this series. Lindsay, Florida likes to pick at you early in the football game. It's a control game. They mix the run and the pass, but they like to throw the short pass. The first play we saw them throw a short pass to Hampton. They've run Hampton a couple times off tackle, but they like to keep you off balance, but with a controlled offensive scheme. Little B line, 5'8", is far, far to the right side. He's going to the left side, and it's completed to Dixon. Dixon's across the 50-yard line. He's the favorite receiver. It's going to be marked at the 48. Steve Bloodworth, the walk-on on the right corner with the defender. First and 10. No, the Gators. Nothing fancy here. Wayne Peace to Dwayne Dixon, number 83. Another all-Southeastern Conference selection at receiver. That's his 43rd reception of the year. The ball is very well thrown. You can see why Peace has such a high completion percentage. You can't help but catch those kind of passes. Joe Henderson into the ball game at fullback. John L. Williams out for Florida. Henderson is 39. McDonald's in the ball game now. Hampton to a wide right. Lone setback. That's Henderson. Peace now pitches to Henderson. And he's going nowhere. There's no gain on the play. Henderson from Winter Garden, Florida, stopped by Isaac Williams from Sanford. Make it second down and 10 yards to go at the 48 yard line. Charlie Pell, head coach at the University of Florida, came here after having had a successful career at Clemson, played his college football at the University of Alabama, and later was on the coaching staff of Paul Bear Bryant. Henderson comes out of the ball game. John L. Williams comes back in for the Gators. They'll do a lot of shuttling. They get them in there and they get them out. Tom Petty tight end moves to the right side. Peace going and completing inside the 30 yard line. It's hinder. It is uh, Mathiel. Mathiel all the way down to the 10 yard line. First down and goal to go a 38 yard pickup for the Gators. Peace to Mathiel. A very impressive opening drive. You see the, the way that Florida has run the ball effectively here in the first se uh, series. Then they fake it to Hampton, get Peace to the outside, and he jumps another short pass over to 89, Ricky Natiel. He breaks a couple tackles and gets way down to the 10-yard line. Another look from the ground level, but again, this is Flo for Florida's philosophy. Dump the ball short, make you miss a couple of tackles, come up with a big play. First down and goal to go. Tip of the ball touching the 10-yard line. Dixon in motion across. It's to the tailback. Hampton diving up to the seven-yard line. Second down and goal at the seven. Stop was made by Brian McCrary from Germantown, Tennessee. He's the free safety. Bobby Bowden was very concerned about Florida's ability to be able to control the clock and control the football. If this first series is any indication, Florida State's defense is in for a long afternoon. Actually, they've had a long season defensively. Walter Odom's in there, tight end now. Neil Anderson's in the tailback, number 27 for Florida. Ball is at the seven-yard line. Peace. Peace. 
Piled it up inches away from the goal line. He did not get in, but he got very, very close. Wayne Peace, the quarterback carrying McCrary, was the man in under who made the tackle. It'll be third down now. We've seen a lot of different offense here from Florida. Now you're going to see an option play. You see Wayne Peace turn around to give his lead blockers an opportunity to come in and give him some help. You saw 22 John L. Williams give him a little block, but a lot of people out in front of Wayne Peace, and he brings the ball down close to a first down. They're going to bring out the chain and measure for the possible first down now. The ball down there at about the one. But it lacks that much, as you can tell. It started with the tip of the ball outside the 10-yard line. They're going to have now John L. Williams, Neil Anderson, and Lorenzo Hampton. What they like to do, what they have liked to do on other occasions, is to run a power eye and have Williams go up and over down here in this circumstance. They weren't too successful with that against Georgia, were they? They weren't. That was the game plan. They tried it and they had it down on the one-yard line and didn't make it. They've had difficulty scoring inside the 20-yard line. So this is a big test for them. First series of the ball game. Third down. Williams in the left set. Anderson in the right set. Peace, the quarterback. Well, Peace has got it to Williams. Touchdown. However, as a penalty marker, his knee was down. And in college football, when the knee goes down and touches the turf, the runner is down, and so Peace is down near the five-yard line. Fourth down coming up. That's exactly right. Wayne Peace, you're going to see him, he gets bumped right here by his offensive guard, number 68, John Hunt. Got in Peace's way, knocked him down. You see him is on his knee there. And as you mentioned, Lindsay, in college football, that's a dead ball. But this is the kind of mistakes that have plagued Florida's offense inside the 20-yard line all season long. It's going to be Raymond in to attempt a field goal now. He is 14 for 17. His long is 46. And Ray Criswell will hold for him. He's the punter. And this will be a 21-yard attempt. Bobby Raymond attempting. Criswell puts it down, and it's a fake. Criswell now can't go. He was going to try to run it. And so the field goal attempt is no good on the fake field goal. Ken Rowe, the linebacker for Florida State, read it out and made the tackle. Ray Quisman, a Florida was, had this in their game plan, obviously. They, want, they felt they could run a fake field goal against the Florida State defense. But right there, there's nowhere to go. Ray Criswell, the holder, number 13, picked it up. Thought there was going to be an opening right here in the bottom of the screen. They thought there was going to be a hole right there. But number 76, Alfonso Carriker, along with some help from his friends, McLean, 86, and some other players, really don't create that. There's the way they thought on the right-hand part of the screen where the hole was going to open up. There's number 38. Ken Rowe is right where they felt the hole was going to be. The kicker really didn't give much help, didn't create a block, but nowhere to go for Ray Criswell, the kicker. There's 9.21 left in the first quarter. That's tonight the very unusual story of a high school girl who became the quarterback of the team and the homecoming queen. A true and touchy story. This, she's 5'4". They said she was too short. I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah. That's what they say about quarterbacks. That's right. Very nice story, though. First and 10 at the 10 now for Florida State. Allen took the ball. Allen at fullback and snipes at tailback. Both in the same backfield now running out of the I formation. Here are the backs and receivers. Quarterback Bob Davis, he's played the past two and a half games, thrown six, six touchdowns and only one interception. Greg Allen, who made the Walter Camp All-American already, he has rushed for over 1,000 yards this year. And Weegee Thompson. Thompson. 6'6", 220, and he can fly. He's had 31 receptions. In the offensive line, their center, number 69, Tom McCormick, a walk-on who started for three seasons. Second down and eight yards to go. Short drop. Well, he tried to get to Weegee Thompson, but Weegee, I'm not sure knew that. <laughs> A little bit behind him. That's set to Florida get his defense. The defensive line, number 99, Roy Harris, recovering from knee surgery, but he is their emotional leader. He's back. Wilbur Marshall, the All-American. He's made it again, and he'll be on everybody's list, I think. Very mobile. He can pursue. The linebackers, number 59, Mark Korf. Pell says one of the most physical linebackers we've ever had. And Tony Lillis back there at free safety. He calls the defensive signals and sets the deep defense. Here they come now. Bob Davis, the quarterback. Hester and Thompson, the wide receivers. Third down and eight yards to go. Or the Seminole. They're on 12. Try the draw play. That throws it out I beg your pardon, it's Allen. That's Greg Allen. Penalty marker, and the ball got away. Florida's got the football. It got away. Florida recovers the fumble. It was Allen, the ball carried. It was recovered at the 26-yard line by Tony Lilly. 
Not a bad call on third and eight. A draw play to one, an All-American back, Greg Allen, number 26. You see him in the fullback position again for the first time. He's following the block of number 63, Ricky Render. He gets in the opening. He actually has the first down picked up, but he is crushed there by 88, Wilbur Marshall. The ball pops loose. 18, Tony Lilly is there. That's good defense. So the Gators get another opportunity at the 26-yard line. The ball is dropped. Scramble is on. Florida retains possession. They recovered their own fumble at the 26-yard line. Neil Anderson on that one. Let's take another look, Lindsay, at the fumble. Here, here's number 26, Greg Allen. He is breaking through. He has the first down picked up. It was third and eight. There's the hit, number 88, the All-American, Wilbur Marshall. There's no doubt that he is an All-American. You can see the ball come loose. There's 81, very alertly, Randy Clark. And 18, Tony Little, the, Lilly, the free safety, came up with it. Jimmy Harper with a procedure penalty. Dead ball foul. Ball pitches. That's a five-yard penalty against the Gators. Moves them back to the 31-yard line. Makes it first down and 15 yards to go. Florida at the Florida State. 31. There is no score We're in the first quarter. Eight minutes, 23 seconds left in the period. B. Lang, Dwayne Dixon of the wide receivers. That is Anderson. Neil Anderson, the tailback. Down to the 21-yard line. Picked up 10 yards, so it'll be second down and five. John McLean made the tackle. Nothing fancy here. Florida has probably has the advantage up in the offensive line, and they're just going to make you stop them. Number 27, Neil Anderson takes the ball deep in the eye formation, cuts back, reads his blocks well, and picks up some good yardage. Good Langs block by Phil Bromley, the center. Langs far to the left side, Odom set in the slot. Dixon's far to the right side. Anderson again, got the first down. It's going to be first down goal to go at the three-yard line. Pat Milligan made the saving tackle. 18 yards on that pickup by Neil Anderson, the leading rusher for the Florida Gators. Take a look at the defensive secondary of Florida State. They look like they're expecting Pascal, so they're double covering the outside receivers. That leaves a little bit of a gap inside the middle there. Neil Anderson, once he breaks the initial line of scrimmage, he's way into the defensive secondary, picks up a big game before you see any Seminole defenders. They go into the power eye now. Anderson is the deep back. Williams the up back. Hampton off to the left. That's Anderson. Piled up. No signal yet. Did not get in. Anderson got very close, but was stopped by Milligan and by Steve Bloodworth. All the ball needs to do is cross the plane of the goal line. Neil Anderson from the tailback position. Let's see what happens. He twists. He turns. You can't really tell from that angle. As a Gator who's getting attention from the training staff now who's injured on the play. That is Anderson, who's carried the ball the last two times. John Hunt from Orlando is the man shaking up. An offensive lineman. Let's take another look at the play, Lindsey. Neil Anderson, again, power football. Florida has the advantage. The Florida State defense has been maligned all season long. Florida's going to come after them with some power football. Just line up their tailbacks deep. Control right. the line of scrimmage and give it to Anderson and Hampton seven yards deep in the eye formation. Anderson has carried three times. He's picked up 30 yards. Second down goal to go. Hunt is out of the ball game. Jeff Zimmerman has replaced him at left offensive guard. That's for the Florida Gators. Stay in the power eye formation. Williams ahead of Anderson. Hampton to the left side. Try to sneak. Touchdown. Touchdown as Wayne Peace kept the football and took it in for the touchdown. <laughs> attempt coming now by Bobby Raymond with Chriswell holding. Raymond is 24 of 26 in points after this season. Chriswell puts it down. Raymond boots it up, and it's good. So the Florida Gators have gone out in front by a score of 7 to nothing. They moved on four plays to 26 yards after recovering the fumble, and it took one minute, 39 seconds. And there's the touchdown. Wayne Peace, number 15, just diving over the right side of his line. Phil Bromley, Buddy Schulteis. But this touchdown was the culmination of a very opportunistic offense. You remember that Florida State turned the ball over. They converted it by running power football. Three or four plays with Neil Anderson picking up huge chunks of yardage. Got down the ball. This time, they put the ball into the end zone for six. Florida has scored.
Pittsburgh first has converted their lead 7-0, and now it's going to be Chris Perkins of the Gators who will be kicking it off to Florida State. Florida State is going to have Rosie Snipes center deep, flanked by Billy Allen on one side and Eric Thomas on the other side. Artificial turf here. Snipes moves over to the corner. He's not going to run it out. Touchback, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Snipes took it and knelt in the end zone. So now, Florida State will try to move it. There's number 26, Greg Allen. We mentioned that he started at fullback today for the first time this year. He Remember, he is an All-American. He's rushed for 1,000 yards. Yet, Roosevelt Snipes, Bobby Bowden, this man right here, feels Roosevelt Snipes, number 20, may be just as good. They want to get Snipes in the open field as much as they can. You're going to see them shift Snipes actually into a, into a receiver set out in the slot, try to get him the ball on some short passes, and let him take advantage of that speed and the skill in the open field. Florida State offense, they've been known as the team that has a flashy offense. They have been known as a team that would try reverses, pitchbacks, gadget players, anything. Davis with the ball, throws it out to Snipes from the left flank. However, he is snowed under for a loss on the play. It was Wilbur Marshall who got to it. Number 88, the great defender, along with Bruce Vaughn on that corner. Surprise, surprise, Wilbur Marshall made the tackle, huh? <laughs> Lost to six, makes it second and 16. Wilbur Marshall broke his hand against USC and missed the Indiana State game this year and has not been as spectacular nor heard from as much in the media as he was last year. Right. So a time of possession, just like last year's game, Florida controlled the clock and never gave Florida State's very explosive offense an opportunity to use their skills. Hassan Jones is in there now. They've got a crew of wide receivers. Try screen to the right side. That's Snipes again on the screen. This time to get back to the 18, where it's going to be third and 12. Randy Clark from strong safety made the tackle, along with Tim Newton on the nose. Newton's had a fine year as the nose man for the Florida Gators. Wilbur Marshall, number 88, he's been a factor certainly here in the first half. This time he's going to be taken out of the play. Again, trying to get Roosevelt Snipes into the patterns, into the open field. They throw him a little screen pass, although Wilbur Marshall is not in the play. A lot of his friends are. Jesse Hester's in there now, number four. He's a dangerous receiver, and along with that, Snipes moving over to a slot right. They want to get him out there where they can get the ball to him if they can. They try the draw play. To the other side, that is Allen carrying. Greg Allen could pick his way only to the 22, and that'll bring the punting unit onto the field now. Florida State unable to get the offense on track so far this afternoon. Greg Cleveland made the tackle with Wilbur Marshall. Punter now in to do the punting is Lewis Berry. He's the nephew of John James, former punter for the Atlanta Falcons from Panama City, Florida. He's averaged 41-6, his long this year, 52. A couple of very good punters today. Roger Sibold is deep now for Florida. Tony Lilly is back there as well. Lilly, and he is at the 31-yard line, drops it. Lilly picks it up and returns it to the 35. Former high school quarterback. That was a 47-yard punt that was returned four yards. So Florida gets the ball still with excellent field position when we come back in just a moment. At Florida Field on the campus of the University of Florida in Gainesville, we have four minutes, 39 seconds left to play in the first quarter. The Gators leading 7 nothing. and they have the ball. First and 10 near the 35-yard line. He's handing it off to Neil Anderson, and Anderson got up to the 40-yard line. He picked up five. Fred Jones made the tackle second and five. Florida that is Anderson. Excuse me, Lily. Florida State has a different defensive philosophy. While you look at teams like Florida and Nebraska and Texas who have a base defense, and you have to out-execute out them, Florida State's defensive philosophy is to really actually guess, to look at their, your tendencies and try to put more people in those areas than you have. So far, it hasn't worked too well. Bobby Biden says if he guesses right, they have a good day. If he guesses wrong, a lot of points get scored against him. Second and five, Wayne Peace with the football. Dropping back to look. Trying to hit Petty over the middle. And covering was Ken Rowe, the linebacker. Kelly Lowry. There he is, number 12, Kelly Lowry. We talked about him earlier in the game. He was a starter for the first eight games. Hurt his knee. He is healthy. And Bobby Bowden says he'll put him in if he team needs a spark a real competitor one of the reasons he didn't start him is the fact that he couldn't exercise when he had the knee surgery and he ballooned up to 239 and a half pounds a 240 pound quarterback is unusual Bowden hasn't spoken to him since he put on all the weight 
Third down play coming now. Third and five. Peace. With a screen right to Hampton. Hampton. Got about four yards on the play. Prince Matt from linebacker made the tackle. That brings the punter on, and that's Ray Criswell. Sophomore from Orange Park, Florida. He was a quarterback in high school. Hassan Jones is dropping back deep. Jones is a speedster standing at his own 15-yard line. Hits and bounces across the 20 to the 15. There will be no run back. It'll start at the 18-yard line. Or rather, the 13-yard line. A 48-yard punt by Chris Well. Following our game, it's NCAA basketball. Number one ranked Kentucky hosting Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers. Sam Bowie. Sam Bowie, you bet. And Mel Turpin, the Twin Towers of Kentucky against Indiana. That is a real backdoor rivalry coming up right after this football game. Now we've got Cletus Jones in there at fullback and Snipes is in the tailback. First and 10 at the 13 for Florida State. No, he was across the line at the 26-yard line. Taken there by Jesse Hester. Bob Davis hit him, but he could not stay in. You said he hit him. He was well covered, Hester was number four. One foot has to be in bounds. Here's the throw. It is well thrown. Just one foot. It looked like he tapped his right foot there to me in bounds. Right there. It looks like his right foot is tapped and in bounds. It should have been a reception. Second down, 10 yards to go at the 13. Jones and Thompson with the wide receivers now. They'll shuttle him in and out all day. He was not a guy to Rosie Snipes. Snipes got just to the 15 yard line before Tim Newton came in to make the stop. Tim Newton, the nose man. Lindsay, we mentioned at the top of the show how big field position was in this football game. For the state, it started with three possessions, once on their 10-yard line, once on their 20-yard line, and once on their 13-yard line. And each time, they've ended up in a third and long situation. And the two previous times, they've run the draw play in this situation. I'll tell you about Tim Newton. He came to school as a 218-pound lineman, went to 290, <laughs> now plays at 275. Down to 275. Down to 275. He's on the nose. Jones has the Utah pass. Rosie Snipe right on Allen. Allen on the Utah pass. There's a fumble. Got away. The scramble is on. And so it is Greg Cleveland, number 64, on the football for Florida. And again, the Gators get the football. It's been a difficult first half for Greg Allen. That is his second fumble. But Florida has recovered. You, as you mentioned, it was the Utah pass or shovel pass. He is, guess who? It was 88. Wilbur Marshall who stripped the ball for the second time. The ball comes loose. Watch 26 Greg Allen. Again, pretty big hole on the draw play. But remember, I mean the pitch play. Wilbur Marshall knocks the ball out. There is 64 Greg Craig Cleveland to make the recovery. Florida has the ball on the 25. First down and 10 yards to go. Wayne Peace, the quarterback. Gives it to his tailback, Neil Anderson. Anderson gets up there to the 22-yard line. Penalty marker on the play. Jimmy Harper, the referee, the man in the white cap. Holding against Florida. Again, penalties have killed Flo this Florida team all season long. Actually, that is their 73rd penalty of the season. Coming in today's game, they've given up over 600 yards in penalties. And the penalties have hurt them. Look at these the games they tied. It was against USC. They had six penalties. They lost to Auburn. They had 10. They lost to Georgia. had two. So they have very much hurt them. Ball moves back there to about the 33-yard line. First uh, down and 18 yards to go. Neil Anderson again, back from running room. Saving tackle made out there by Steve Bloodworth. The corner, the little man out there, five feet eight inches tall, 165 pounder, a walk-on. 
Marked at the 21-yard line. Again, one more time, Neil Anderson, power football. The Florida offensive line is dominating the line of scrimmage. And here's a good look at Phil Bromley, the All-Southeastern Conference Center. Gets a little help from John Hunt, the guard. You can see the hole right there for Neil Anderson. Second and six at the 20. 21. Anderson. Pushed out of bounds at the 18-yard line by Steve Bloodworth. We talked about what bad field position Florida State has had on offense. On, on the other side of the ball, Florida has had very good field position. They've had four possessions. Two of them have started in Florida State territory on Florida State's 26 and on Florida State's 25, both after fumbles of Greg Allen's. Third and three at the 18. And a slot left. That's Odom in the slot to the left side. Dixon behind him. Anderson's the tailback. That's Odom in motion all the way across. That's Anderson. Didn't get the first down. Was upset and undercut by Ken Rowe, the linebacker from Cropwell, Alabama. That brings up a fourth down. Florida is leading by a score of 7-0, and now they're bringing Bobby Raymond on to attempt a field goal. Good defense here. Number 38, Ken Rowe, the linebacker. You see there, there on the right-hand part of your screen, he jumps, hurdles right over John L. Williams and makes a stop and forces a field goal attempt. That's excellent defense by Rowe. From the hash mark left, a 34-yard attempt now. Chris Well was holding. Bobby Raymond is kicking. And it's good. Three more points for the Florida Gators, who in the brilliant sunshine that is first through here now lead by a score of 10 to nothing. Some 73,000 fans here at Florida Field today for this annual battle between Florida State and Florida. It is, of course, a non-conference game. Each of these teams already has accepted a bowl bid. So this is just a backyard battle here this afternoon. Tomorrow, the NFL Today kicks off great regional action. Dallas Cowboys take on the dangerous Seattle Seahawks. Atlanta Falcons face John Riggins and the Redskins. Plus, these other games you see, it all starts with the NFL Today. Check your local listings for your game tomorrow on CBS Sports. The NFL Today, or the NFL, won a Emmy Award this week. We are all very, very proud of them for bringing us football on Sundays. Our congratulations to all of them. Chris Perkins is going to kick it off now. Hash mark left. Rosie Snipes is in the center deep. Billy Allen's on one side and Eric Thomas on the other. Knuckleball. Snipes takes the knuckle on the four-yard line to the 5, 10, 15. Snipes trying to get to the sideline and up the sideline. Returned it at that to the 35-yard line where it'll be first down and 10 yards to go for Florida State. Curtis Stacy made the tackle for the Gators. 31-yard return. Roosevelt Snipes came up with a big player there. This is the best field position the Florida State's offense has had all afternoon. Now, the offense has to do something. The defense has been on the field much too long here in the first half, first quarter, and Florida is really taking it to them on defense. So the offense has to do their part, get a couple of first downs, come up with a big play. It is Kelly Lowry at quarterback. They brought Lowry in at quarterback. 239-pounder has the football. Lowry pops it out there complete. Taken by Tom Wheeler is tight end. Bobby Bowden felt, I'm sure, that the time had come, having given up 10 points. He had to get Lowry on the field. He, he felt that he could give them a spark. He is a senior. He is a leader. He is an incredible competitor. Bobby Bed Bowden said about Lowry, he is the best all-around talented quarterback we've had at Florida State. Perhaps this is the lift that they need offensively. First and 10 now for the Seminoles at their own 46-yard line. Snipes and Cletus Jones are in that backfield. Snipes the tailback. Jones the fullback. Snipes with the ball. He's pulled out. Could not go, and it was Mark Korf, the linebacker. Gain of about two yards. Time has run out on the clock on the field, uh, showing no time remaining. However, we have had no signal from the field itself. Clock says 15 minutes remain to be played. That means it's another quarter, folks. <laughs> And so Jimmy Harper takes the football and marks it over to the other side of the 50-yard line. That was the end of the quarter. Florida 10, Florida State nothing.
Bobby Bowden told us last night that he would not hesitate to bring Lowry into the ball game, that he would start him, except for the fact that he was overweight and he thought he might run out of gas, but if he got behind, he wouldn't hesitate to bring him in. He's in as we start the second quarter, and that's Kelly Lowry with the football. Incomplete. It was Fred McAllis to the linebacker, number 46. Intended for Roosevelt Snipes. Let's check out that time of possession in the first quarter. We said last year's game, that was the key statistic. It has been so far this game, too. Florida, 10, 10 and a half minutes. Florida State, four and a half minutes. The Florida State offense is going to have to control the ball, but that has also been the story. Two turnovers by Greg Allen has given Florida excellent field position, allowed them to put 10 points on the board. The Florida State, Tom McCormick is out at center. San Restivo is in. Third down, eight yards to go at the 48-yard line for the Seminoles. Kelly Lowry. All the time in the world. Complete. Second down there inside the 35 yard line. Hassan Jones stopped by Fred McAllister. Jones knocked out at about the 31 yard line. Bobby Bowden said the key to his offense is giving his quarterback time to throw. He's had plenty of time to throw, and you're going to watch number 88, Hassan Jones, run across the middle. The quarterback still is not under pressure. There's the throw and the catch for first down, but we're going to bring it back because there was a penalty on the play. It's a procedure penalty against the Florida State Gators, so it will cost him a 17-yard pickup on the pass, bring it back to the line of scrimmage, and Jimmy Harper, the referee of the Southeastern Conference, marks off the five-yard penalty. Illegal procedure on the offense, six men on the line of scrimmage. You got it. Formation violation. Can you, can you tell we're in the south? Yes, he is. As a matter of fact, I've had Jimmy Harper in three consecutive games. <laughs> I had him at Foxborough, Massachusetts for Boston College, Alabama, and at Kentucky for Kentucky, Tennessee. Three in a row. Kelly Lowry. And it's caught. Taken by Hester. Jesse Hester at the 32-yard line. That'll be enough for a first and ten. Mark Korf. Linebacker made the tackle. Kelly Lowry has done exactly what Bo Bobby Bowden had hoped, and that's provide a, provide a spark. Again, excellent, superb protection for Lowry as it delivers another strike to Jesse Hester, number four. Enough for the first down. It was third and about 15. Hester ran the right route to get, pick up the first down. He did that. They got 24 yards on the play. Now Tony Johnson comes in as a wide receiver, and Ouija Thompson goes off. Johnson to the left side, Jesse Harper to the right Jesse Hester to the left, right side. Billy Lowry going long, way down there, and Hester's got it. Touchdown. Jesse Hester for the touchdown. Oh, I love it. Vito McKeever covering on the corner. three-yard pass play and now a conversion attempt by Philip Hall who is no good no good as he stubbed that one that's the sixth extra point they have missed this season a look at Kelly Lowry he does it more by force of will than talent but this ball is beautifully thrown to number four Jesse Hester you saw Lowry look off the defense he actually looked off the free safety Tony Lilly number 18 but absolutely a superb throw and remarkable concentration by Hester Bobby Powden calls him our most dangerous receiver and you see why watch this catch superb and so the score is now Florida 10 Florida State 6 Lowry since coming to the game is 3 for 4 68 yards and one touchdown Jesse Hester, who just made his sixth touchdown reception of this season. And it was a Lulu down deep in the end zone. Now it's going to be Florida State kicking off. And it'll be Barry Barco. There is the scoring drive. Five plays, 65 yards a minute 40. 33 yards pass from Lowry to Hester. Lorenzo Hampton is center deep to receive it. However, it's going into the end zone and it will not be run out it's a touchback it'll be first and 10 at the 20 yard line Joe Henderson took it there is Kelly Lowry he throws pretty good for a guy 240 pounds didn't he 
He certainly does. His quarterback coach is Mike Krusik, <laughs> formerly of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he's going to come back to an active career in the USFL at Jacksonville, and uh, apparently Kelly Lowry is going to compete with him for the job. I wonder if he's really teaching him how to read coverages, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> First down, 10 yards to go now for the Gators. They have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Hampton and Henderson in the backfield. A little groundskeeping taking place for the moment. Holding up play. We're ready to go now. Wayne Peace playing his last game on Florida field for the Gators. He's had an outstanding career as quarterback. Start dropping guns. Gathered in up there at the 29-yard line by Dwayne Dixon. It's a favorite passing combination of the Gators. Steve Bloodworth covering on the corner. Football is a game of, of momentum. We saw Florida early in the football game have that momentum and give them 10 points. We saw a change at quarterback to gain some momentum for Florida State. Kelly Lowry gave that to him, came back from throw a touchdown. Now it's back up to Wayne Peace to try to get the momentum back in his favor. Keep he, Lowry off the field. He is five for six, 66 yards. They run the pitch this time to Henderson. Got the first down. Joe Henderson carried. And Brian Williams came in to make the tackle. Let's take another look at the center. Phil Bromley, the All-Southeastern Conference Center. Watch the kind of work that he has. He's snapping left-handed because he broke his right hand early in the year. You see him doing a little crab block there on the linebacker on Fred Jones, number 55. That's good work by Bromley. Last year, the Florida Gators won by keeping the football and keeping it away from Florida State in the first quarter. Florida State had the ball 4 minutes, 33 seconds. Florida had it 10 minutes, 27 seconds. That's the way you play possession football. If you get a couple of breaks, you got something on the scoreboard. Well, it's a pitch to Hampton from Peace on one hop. Where do you go with it? Well, to the line of scrimmage, more than likely. Not quite that. Loss of about three yards on the play. Bloodworth again on the tackle with Brian Williams. Going to be spotted at the 29-yard line. Loss of eight yards on the play. They're all out here for this one. <laughs> what, what, uh, what shirt did he uh, crawl <laughs> off of? <laughs> A lot of those in this area, believe me. Oh, yes. Ray McDonald has come out of the field now as a wide receiver for Florida. Second and long. Wayne Peace. And it's completed to the 33-yard line. Taken there by Dixon, Dwayne Dixon, number 83. Tracy, Tracy Ashley made the tackle. Again, the short passing of Florida. Remember, it was second and very long there. They wanted to get it back in two chunks. A short pass there to Dwayne Dixon, number 83, but they're still faced with third and 11. Third and 11 at the 36. Time remaining in the half, 12.42 and running. Florida leading by a score of 10 to 6. Wayne Peace. Completed it across the 50 yard line. Taken by Dwayne Dixon. John McLean made the tackle. Peace was reached just as he unloaded the football. You're absolutely right. Wayne Peace was under some duress. Watch. Number 83, Dwayne Dixon. He averages five receptions a game. He's certainly been a factor here in the first half. The ball is right in the numbers there. He catches the ball, knows where the first down marker is, and picks it up, keeps the chains moving. 16-yard pickup on the play. Wayne Peace last year set an NCAA record for completions in the season, 71.3. It was broken by Steve Young of BYU this season. Henderson gets it all the way down to the 37-yard line. Now it's very close to a first down. They'll take a good look at this one. Might have picked it up as we look at it from here. They'll take it to the inbound mark and spot it. First and ten for the Gators. I'm a big gainer. At the 37-yard line of the Florida State Seminoles. First down, Florida. The best part of the Florida State team is their offense. Their defense is going to have to do something to get the ball back and let Kelly Lowry do his thing. They may have to blitz or slant or come up with a big turnover to give Lowry a chance. Down the far to the right side. That's Williams. Donnell Williams inside the 
30 to the 29 yard line. Picked up about eight on the play. It'll be second down and two. Brian McCrary made the tackle. Here's the play selection. We've seen Florida run the ball 20 times and very effectively. Effectively, They've passed eight times. Most of them are the short variety, really a controlled passing game, almost like a run. Have dominated the line of scrimmage, controlled the clock. Ricky Nateel, far to the left side. McDonald to the right side. They move Hampton into the slot left. Donnell Williams with a long setback for Peace. And Williams has got the ball. He's inside the 20-yard line. He goes all the way down to the 16-yard line. McQuarrie finally brought him down at the 16. Florida is controlling the nose guard. See how deep the safeties are. They really aren't there to come up and support. And here's John L. Williams, just a quick little hitter over the middle. Once you get past the nose guard, you're right in the secondary, but by the time you get there, you've already picked up 10 or 12 yards. This is the sort of thing that Coach Bobby Bowden of Florida State was concerned about. He's saying you can't run an offense and score if you can't get the ball. All control offense by Florida Gators. John L. Williams then got loose from him, and they stack him up down there about the 15-yard line. Florida retains possession at the 15. Well, that's what Florida State has to hope for, actually, a turnover and com coming up with the ball there. Florida retained possession. Second and nine at the 15. Actually, it's Gandy yard on the fumble. Scott Trimble was the man who was on the ball. Lake Brantley, Florida, 6'5", 291-pound offensive tackle, and here's a timeout signal. Timeout charge to Florida. First of three charge to the Florida Gators. So the Gators are out front of the ball game. They're leading by a score of 10 to 6. They're threatening again. They're down at the 15. We have 10 minutes, 2 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. At Florida Field in Gainesville, Florida, some 73,000 fans packed and jammed in here. We have 10 minutes, 2 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. The Gators are leading the Seminoles by a score of 10 to 6. Florida has the ball at the 15-yard line, second and nine. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Pat Hayden. Wayne Peace, the quarterback, number 15. Receivers double to the right side, movement. The offensive line, then of the defensive line, and then contact. We've mentioned penalties and how they have hurt this Florida football team all season long. And again, that is their 73rd penalty of the season. Cost them five. Their third of the day for 20 yards. Illegal procedure. Hold oh, off that. I think it was Lomas Brown who moved. Ball moves back to the 20-yard line. Second and 14 at the 20. There's to Neil Anderson, the tailback. He's stopped by Ken Rowe, the linebacker on the left side. Down there at the 17-yard line. Be third down and 11. Spotted now on the 12. Thank you, pardon, 17. There goes the little man, B. Lang, far to the right side. Here's Tom Petty, the tight end over right. Dixon in motion across. Wayne Peace. Incomplete to Dixon in the end zone. Bloodworth covering. Little man Bloodworth, the walk-on in the right corner that we talked about in the NCAA today. It's the man who was there, number nine. Wayne Peace had number 83, Dwayne Dixon, open early, but he was under pressure from Alfonso Caracur, so he couldn't get the ball to him. You can see 83 Dixon there beating Bloodworth. He's open, but again, Peace is under duress. He throws the ball late, and Bloodworth makes a nice play. The walk-on, Steve Bloodworth. Fourth down coming up here, a 33-yard attempt. For Bobby Raymond, Chriswell is holding for it. 33-yarder is good. But Florida adds three more from the kicker. Nine minutes, 13 seconds remaining to be played in the first half of the ball game. The Gators are now leading by a score of 13 to 6.
Yes. Indiana and Kentucky coming up next now. Live from Rupp Arena, one of the big, big college basketball games. Talking about a few national championships between those two schools. These are the starting lineups, the ball players that we expect to see in the Indiana versus Kentucky coming up immediately following this football telecast. It's going to be Chris Perkins kicking off. Snipes in the end zone. Will not run it out. Touchback first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Time of possession, as you mentioned earlier, Lindsay, you cannot score without the football. Florida State has not had it enough. Florida's had it for 10 more minutes here in the first half. There's still nine minutes left to go in the first half. Kelly Lowry, number 12, the quarterback. He can throw it a mile. Strong arm. Now a short drop. Gets it out there to Hester. Jesse Hester out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Picked up six, it'll be second and four. Ricky Eastman on the corner, ran him out. There's Eastman on that corner from Donellan, Florida. We've seen two different styles of passing here. Florida State really does like to get the ball downfield to their wide receivers. We saw, we saw the big touchdown catch by Hester a little earlier. Florida, on the other hand, again, as we've seen, likes to dump the ball off to the backs and throw short routes to Dixon. They both get the job done, but different approaches. Hester's caught three for 63 yards so far. He's coming out to a wide left this time. Allen and Snipes are the running backs in there together. That's Allen, Greg Allen with the football. On to Little Daylight. He's rushed for over 1,000 this year. Got to the 35 there. Ricky Eastman in to make the stop. First and 10, a gain of about nine on the play. Here he is. He made the Walter Camp All-American football team as well as Wilbur Marshall, number 88 for Florida. Last year, he led the nation in scoring. This year, he scored 12 touchdowns. Greg Allen. McCormick's back in there at center. Cletus Jones is the fullback. Snipes is the tailback. Lowry, authorizing at the line of scrimmage. He's got the ball. Hester. Incomplete. The move was made by Bruce Vaughn from Largo, Florida, the cornerback over there. 47. This is a superb defensive play by 47, Bruce Vaughn. He has him one-on-one -on -one out here because it's a safety blitz. He reads the out cut and dives right in front of Hester. Almost nearly intercepts the ball, but certainly prevents Hester from making the catch. Lowry is four for six, 74 yards and one touchdown since coming in. There's Vaughn. They say he reads receivers and cuts as well as anyone we've ever had here who's played defensive back. Eight minutes, 32 seconds left in the first half. Lowry. Incomplete. It was Tony Johnson trying to hang on on his fingertips, but he could not. It's incomplete. Burnell Brown was covering. <laughs> Take a look at the defensive secondary of Florida and how they're trying to defense Kelly Lowry. You see the two safeties deep in the middle of the screen right there. They want to take away the deep play that Hester caught a little bit earlier. So what do you have to do? You have to go underneath those safeties. And that's exactly what's happening here. But the linebackers do a very good job of dropping and actually force the ball to be thrown high so that Tony Johnson, number 82, can't catch the ball. That's good play by the, by the linebackers of Florida. Third and 10 for the Seminole. Some players were in the right place at the right time. That makes them very good. Another sense of the game. Kelly Lowry is back. He's under incredible pressure there by number eight, Ricky Eastman, a corner blitz. And Lowry threw the ball without ever seeing Marshall. He wasn't under duress, but Mar Marshall was right there to make the interception. Another turnover, and the Gators have the football. Wayne Pease dropping and running up the middle. 
Beast to the 30-yard line. Picked up five yards on the play, second and five at the 30. Steve Bloodworth made the tackle, and there is Wilbur Martin. Uh, uh, Bloodworth and Williams. Dominating player on defense for Florida. That's exactly what Florida State's defense has lacked this year, the dominating player that can raise the level of his teammates, raise the level of play of his teammates. Marshall certainly does that for the Gators. Florida came into this game with a record of 7-2-1. Florida State came in 6-4. and four. He went on the ground. Taken by Joe Henderson. Winter Garden, Florida. Got it down there to the 26-yard line before Brian Williams brought him down to gain a four. It'll be third down and a yard to go. Time remaining is 7-22 and, and running. That's remaining in the first half. It was overcast most of the morning here in Gainesville, but just about kickoff time, the sun broke through the overcast. So we're getting a timeout signal here. It is charged to Florida State. So the Gators are leading Florida State by a score of 13 to 6 with 7.09 remaining in the first half. The Florida Gators have the ball now. Third down and a yard to go at the 26-yard line of Florida State. Wayne Peace, the quarterback. Neil Anderson, John L. Williams are the setbacks. They're in a power eye formation. Give it to Anderson. He's got the first and ten. Up and over for the first down. McCrary made the tackle. He spotted just inside the 24-yard line. Charlie Pell, head coach of the Florida Gators, came here after having been head coach at Clemson. One time was on the staff at Virginia Tech. Played at Alabama, coach for Bear Bryant there, was on the staff at Kentucky. Veteran football man, Charlie Pell. Lang and Dixon are the wide receivers. Wayne Peace. Down the right. Ken Rowe made the tackle. They sort of used the umpire as a screen there. Ken Rose is making a lot of tacklers, tackles today. There he is. They say he's the most efficient linebacker they have. Their leading tackler from Cropwell, Alabama. Second down and 10 yards to go. Wayne Peace in 1981 had 117 consecutive completions without an interception. His lifetime completion percentage 61.4. He is accurate. Neil Anderson, Neil Anderson to the five. First and goal at the five for the Gators. Peace to Anderson. Scott made the tackle. Wayne yards. to Neil Anderson. You don't think these two, this is a hot interstate rivalry? Watch the effort of Neil Anderson after he catches this football. He's bouncing off a couple of tackles, jumping over guys. Finally does get tackled down there in the five-yard line. A very good throw by Wayne Peace, again, under a little bit of duress from Alfonso Carricker. The ball is well thrown right in the numbers to Anderson. Wayne Peace has just broken John Reeves, Southeastern Conference, and school record of 603 career completions. That record just set there by Wayne Peace with that completion. Timeout on the field. When players resumed, it'll be at the five-yard line. First and goal for the Gators. Florida leading Florida State by a score of 13 to 6. Well, there's the record we told you about that Wayne Peace just set, and he also has set another Southeastern Conference total offense. Wayne Peace has just moved past former Heisman winner Pat Sullivan into third place with 6,853 yards. First and goal for the Gators at the five-yard line of Florida State. Five minutes, 46 seconds left in the half. Wayne Peace with the ball, throws into the end zone, and incomplete. <laughs> it was Tom Petty, the tight end, trying to scoop it up. Second and goal at the five-yard line. You're not going to see Wayne Peace miss too many of these kind of throws. But you hear, they fake it to Neil Anderson. That play has been so effective all day, the defense has to respect it. And you're going to see the result. Tom Petty, number 85, is wide open. But Peace tried to aim the ball. Sometimes quarterbacks do that. When they have a receiver wide open, instead of drilling the ball in there, they'll try to aim it. And that's exactly what happened there. Florida has 108 yards passing and 107 yards. 
much rushing so far in this ball game. That is what you call balance. <laughs> He's got the ball. He's got a touchdown. Conversion attempt coming now. It is Bobby Raymond in to attempt it. Chris Well is holding for him. Raymond's conversion is good. The gate is 20 and Florida State 6. 535 remaining to be played in the first half. There was a little confusion here as you watch Wayne Peace. You can see a little early in the game, you remember he ran into the offensive lineman. There's some more confusion there. But Wayne Peace shows his athleticism. He said what a great thrower he is, how accurate it is. Here he uses his feet, as he did in this drive a couple of different times, scrambling for yardage. Here he gets into the end zone. Again, it's going to be an option play. You can see the right guard, Buddy Schulteis, number 73, leading down front. Wayne Peace finds a little gap there and turns on the juice, knows where the end zone is. But this touchdown was really the result of another turnover, Florida State's third turnover. Remember Walter, remember Wilbur Marshall intercepted that pass, gave Florida excellent field position for the third time today. Florida being an opportunistic offense, put it in the end zone one more time. And now we have the kickoff coming from the hash mark left, and it's going to be Chris Perkins kicking it off. That's Charlie Pell pacing the sidelines, head coach of the Gators. Well, you couldn't tell he's, he's leading 26, could you? Close he snipes. He won't get it. It's going to go into the end zone, and it's going to be run out. Eric Thomas is going to try to run it out and throw it back across the field. Taken over there by Hester. Jesse Hester now up the sideline. This is Florida State and Bobby Bowden. 45 all the way down to the Florida 39. Here's the throw. Bobby Bowden, you never know quite what to expect. Here is the throw back over to number four, Jeff Jesse Hester. He felt if his defense couldn't keep forward from the end zone, he was going to have to create some big plays. One way to do it is on special teams, and here is a big play. A surprise for a big gain way down into Florida territory at the 39. Bobby Bowden, there is no penalty marker. 61-yard pickup. First and 10 at the 39-yard line of Florida. Lowry with the football. Swings it out to Allen. Greg Allen with the ball. Looking for some running room. Penalty marker is thrown. Two penalty markers are thrown. So we'll have to check out the penalty markers now. Penalty is against Florida State. Be marked off in the 40-yard line. A 15-yard penalty will put the Seminoles back at their own 45. Flipping, flipping on offense during the play. That takes a lot of air out of the big play on the special teams by Hester. It's first and forever now. It's all of that. Jamie Dukes, number 64, he's right there. His helmet has to be in front of the defender there. You can see he clipped number nine, 93, Alonzo Johnson. Good call by the official. First and 26 yards to go. Kelly Lauer waiting to get the snap. By the draw play. It's Allen. Greg Allen got about three yards and was hit by Fred McAllister, the linebacker from Melbourne, Florida. That's up the 48-yard line. It'll be second down now and 23 yards to go. Four minutes, 40 seconds left to play in the first half. Florida's leading by a score of 20 to 6. Allen has carried six times for 42 yards. Coming into the game today, he had rushed for 1,047 yards this year. Six feet tall, 200 pounder. Nice in the right set. Lowry. Going deep. Intercepted at the 25-yard line. Second by Ricky Eastman. Eastman with the interception.
The fourth turnover by the Florida State offense. Number 88, Hassan Jones. It's actually double coverage here. You're going to see Ricky Eastman, number eight, come underneath the ball. He read Lowry all the way, made a very nice interception. Here, one more look. Ricky Eastman, the junior, is 5'10", 155 pounds, leaps up in front of Jones, makes a very nice play. Another big play by the Florida defense. First and 10 for Florida. They have the ball now at their own 23-yard line. Now the tailback, Hampton. Lorenzo Hampton out to the 27. Stopped by Isaac Williams. Gain of four, makes it second down and six yards to go. Look at those turnovers, fumble, fumble, and interception, touchdown, field goal, and touchdown. That's what you call capitalizing on your opportunities, and that is the name of the game. Ford is just too good an offensive football team to be able to turn the ball over four times and not get hurt. Into the tailback, and this time he stacked up. Hampton pushed back at the 26-yard line by Ponder and by Stanley Scott. It'll be third down and seven. Bach is running. 3.15 remaining to be played in the half. Florida leading Florida State 20 to 6. Lang is going far to the right side. Dixon far to the left side. Over the middle, Dixon at the 40, and Dixon gets it all the way up to the 44-yard line. Prince Matt made the tackle. Here's a look at Bobby Bowden. Some people might think he just wanted to get into the halftime regroup. He's down 20 to 6. That is not Bobby Bowden's style. Believe me, if he gets the ball back, he's going to push the ball upfield and try to get it in the end zone. When you're down 20 to 6, you need to do some things like that. First down and 10 yards to go with the ball just outside the 44-yard line. Wayne Peace with a quick pitch to the outside of Neil Anderson. Anderson across the 50. Across the 45 and out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Ryan McCrary ran him out. It'll be marked at the 44. Florida has the capability of running the ball inside, get the tough yards. We've seen them do that with Neil Anderson. They also have the capability of running the ball outside with some speed. Again, here's the little quick toss to Anderson. He gets outside and picks up a first down. Anderson's carried 10 times for 66 yards so far this afternoon. First and 10, Florida at the Florida State 44. This Anderson carry. Penning his way all the way down inside the 34-yard line. Alfonso Carica, great defensive tackle, made the stop. Carica's from Columbus, Ohio. Got away from Ohio State. He said Ohio State didn't really pay an awful lot of attention to him. I think they may live to regret that. They did. He's been back <laughs> twice and uh, participated in defeating him. They're measuring for the possible first down. It is a first and ten. Near the conclusion of today's CBS Sports NCAA football telecast, Pat and I will be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each of the teams. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. The MVPs receive certificates from Chevrolet acknowledging their outstanding performances. First and 10 at the 34. Henderson, the up back, 39, got through there inside the 25 to the 23. Another first down, Pat Milligan made the stop. First and 10 at the 23. Florida State's defense has been very soft right up the gut. You can see another huge gaping hole. Bromley, the center, does a nice job, clears the way for Henderson, but there's nobody there until the defensive backs. They're going to have to shift their offensive defensive front to get some more help in the middle. The domination of the offensive line. First down play coming, Wayne Peace, the quarterback. Gets it to Henderson again. They keep running it. And so far, the state stops it. They're going to keep running it. It's inside the five yard line. McLean made the tackle. First and goal at the five yard line, an 18 yard pickup by Joe Henderson. 
from Winter Garden, Florida. Lindsay, you are absolutely right. You keep running something until they stop it. So they come right back to Joe Henderson, the exact same play. Right past the nose guard, right past the linebackers. A couple of big blocks there into the defensive secondary. Another big gain by Joe Henderson. Donnell Williams is in there now with Neil Anderson. They're on a power eye formation. Wayne Peace, the quarterback. Gives it to Williams. Got not much, maybe a foot. It was Isaac Williams who came underneath to make the stop. He's from Sanford, Florida. We have less than a minute remaining in the half, and the clock is running, and Florida wants a timeout. Peace running up there saying, give us a timeout, and they got it, and I think that's their last one. And now, as we have a timeout on the field, let's visit the campuses of both of these fine Florida schools. I'm Robert Marston. A new and better world for all will grow from new opportunities in information transfer. Whether my own personal computer, improved student learning, or the protection of Florida's citrus industry, the University of Florida will be a part of and benefit from advances in the computer and information sciences. Because we know this will require new forms of cooperation, the University of Florida is developing this land for a research and technology park for industry. 54 seconds left to play in the half. Florida leading by a score of 20 to 6. The ball is at the five-yard line. It'll be second down and goal at the five for the Florida Gators, and here they come. Wayne Peace is over on the sideline talking to the spotters upstairs on the headset so he knows what they want to try to do here from the five-yard line. They're in a power eye formation. Williams, John L. Williams, down inside the three-yard line where it'll be third down and goal. Brad Foytick made the tackle. He's from Auburndale, Florida. Third and goal at the three-yard line. He's rolling and looking. Wants to throw back. Can't do that. He evades the tackler. Throws it away. Across the end line. It'll be fourth down coming up. Neil Anderson was down there in that general geographical area, but there seems to be a flag on the play, and it's being checked out just now. Here's There's a look no at Wayne flag. Peace. The flag was dropped inadvertently. There, we no have the official saying the flag was dropped inadvertently. So this is a very smart play by Wayne Peace. He gets rid of the ball without taking a sack. But it's a big defensive play also by Florida State, which forces Florida into a fourth and goal situation and forces a field goal attempt. Flag was thrown inadvertently, and so now the field goal unit has come on. And this will be a 21-yard attempt for Bobby Raymond. Ray Criswell holding for him. 21 yard here is good. Three more points for the Florida Gators to make it 23 to 6. 18 seconds on the clock remaining to be played in the first half. One of the big games coming up, of course, in the postseason array is the Cotton Bowl game in Dallas, Texas. On January 2nd, we've got Florida against Georgia, a fine football game. Well, excellent defense. We've seen Texas a couple of times this year, the number one ranked defense in the country. They've been superb. Georgia supports a very good defense as well. They've picked up after Herschel Walker doing quite well, thank you. Terry Holt, the All-American, their strong safety. It's going to be a good game. And, of course, also on CBS Sports, you'll see the Sun Bowl. That's Alabama against SMU on Saturday, December 24th. SMU is probably one of the finest teams in the country that nobody's heard about. They haven't got the respect. Bobby Collins is disappointed that he hasn't gotten the respect throughout the country. They are a very good football team. And also on CBS Sports, you'll see the Peach Bowl, and we'll tell you a little more about that later. Chris Perkins is ready to kick it off. Florida State and North Carolina in the Peach Bowl. It's a touchback. Eric Thomas sort of made a move there. Let's uh, look again uh, and talk about the Peach Bowl coming up in Atlanta. Florida State. And North Carolina, that is on Friday, December 30th. Well, Florida State's going to have to find some defense before they get there because North Carolina is a very good offensive football team. Scott Stankavage has had a very good year at quarterback. Dr. Archie Roberts, report to the information booth at gate two. Dr. Archie Roberts, for the information booth at gate two. Kelly Lowry, the quarterback, brings him up now first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Stay tuned uh, during the halftime intermission. We'll bring his... All sorts of information with Brenton Era from New York. 
That is Greg Allen carrying the football, and he got out there for about three. Wilbur Marshall upset him. First half really has been a half of turnover, turnovers. Florida State has turned the ball over four times. But really, that's been the result of their defense really not keeping Florida off the field. They're playing catch-up, and that's why they turned the ball over so much. Time has run out. It's the end of the first half. Our score is 23 to 6. We'll be back with Brent Mayer from New York plus a live report from Lexington, Kentucky. It's all coming up after this word about an upcoming show on CBS and a message coming from your local station. You're watching here on CBS this afternoon. Florida is dominating Florida State, 23 to 6. I always like to walk around a golf course with that on your shirt right there. Uh, Coach, you, take us through you, some of the highlights. You do when you're in Florida. Here's a little gadget. Ray Creswell, a holder. Uh, this isn't quite as innovative as Nebraska's attempt on a field goal attempt last week. They're unsuccessful, but Wayne Peace, the next opportunity after a fumble, takes it in for the first touchdown for Florida. Bobby Bowden, as you see there, uh, a little concerned. Here's a touchdown from... Kelly Lowry to Hester, a beautiful throw, a great catch in the end zone. Hester is a great wideout. And here comes Wayne Peace on a little option play. I think it's a little mix-up, but he sees the daylight and takes it in for the touchdown. And, of course, Florida has dominated the game, at least in the first half. Now, coming up on CB... Florida State versus Florida, an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports, is sponsored by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. The investment firm of Dean Witter, we're worth asking about. And by Michelob Light, an exceptional light beer with a rich, smooth taste. It's halftime, and Florida is leading Florida State by a score of 23 to 6. Here are halftime stats. And Lindsay, the real story has been turnovers. You can see there, Florida State has turned the ball over four times, two fumbles and two interceptions. Now, Florida's got them backed up. Florida State is down. Florida State's going to have to come out and play guess up football, throw the football, and I expect to see some more pressure on Kelly Lowry and perhaps a couple more interceptions. Time of possession has been such a big thing so far. It has been in this series, too, and Florida has dominated the line of scrimmage. They controlled the clock and put Florida State in a disadvantaged field position. What does Florida State have to do now coming out in the second half? Well, I think it's important, again, for Kelly Lowry to keep coming up with some big plays. He did that in the first half. The problem now is to try to eliminate the mistakes, eliminate the turnovers. Well, we got a lot of football coming here and a lot of football coming a lot of places. Field Scoville of the Cotton Bowl Selection Committee went to the University of Texas to invite the Longhorns to the Cotton Bowl game on January 2nd. So January 2nd, the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. The Georgia Bulldogs and the Texas Longhorns on CBS Sports. You've done a few of those Cotton Bowls, haven't you? Cotton Bowl is, is exciting no matter what. We've had some great, great football games, and we'll have more, uh, of course, starting with January 2nd. We're going to have quite a half coming up here because I'm sure that Bobby Bowden and the Florida Seminoles, Florida State Seminoles, are not going to let this game go by without pulling everything they've got out, and they've got a lot of things hidden away there. Well, we saw the pass on the kickoff return, and Bobby Bowden is famous for this. He will throw the football from anywhere on the field. He'll run reverses. He'll do whatever he has to do to try to come up with a win. You know, it's the kind of football game that Charlie Pell sort of likes to play. He's in control. He's gotten breaks. He's managed to cash them in and just balance and keep it going, and that's what he's done. Here are the key faces, some of the stars we saw in the first half for Florida State. Bob Davis, he didn't really play much, only had one of three in the first half. They were replaced by Kelly Lowry. Greg Allen had seven carries for 44 yards. Kickoff is taken at the nine-yard line, returned by Florida State. It was Eric Thomas who returned it, and it's at the 25-yard line, first and 10 for the Seminole. Chris Perkins kicked it off. 23 to 6. The Gators of Florida are leading Florida State. Here are some of the other key faces for Florida State. Roosevelt Snipe was not, not, not much of a factor. Only three carries for eight yards. And Ouija Thompson, well, he didn't catch a ball. Kelly Lowry is at quarterback starting the second half play here for Florida State. Bob Davis started the ball game. Lowry relieved him. F 
after the Gators went ahead by 10 points. Lowry throw it. Oh, my, that's dangerous. That's a penalty marker. He's trying to get it to Jesse Hester. The move was made by Bruce Vaughn, number 47, and the flag was thrown. Let's meet the key faces of the Gator defense. Wilbur Marshall, what a first half he had. Had one interception and caused two fumbles. Alonzo Johnson, he had a big first half as well. Made a couple of big tackles. Fred McAllister, he's been their leading tackler all season long. Again, a big first half. And the punter. Ray Criswell, actually, he only punted one time, but, but it was for 49 yards. Pass interference call against Florida. That is a first down at the 30-yard line for the Florida State Seminole. Vaughn made his move on Hester. They are a man short there. Now they get the, the 11th man on the field, Hassan Jones. <laughs> Kelly Lowry waiting to take the snap. Lowry's got the ball. He can throw it a mile. It's intercepted at the 46-yard line by Bruce Vaughn. And Bruce Vaughn returns it to the 34. Now fists are flying. Tempers are flaring. Fists are flying. The officials jump in to get them separated. Florida will have the ball on the interception first and 10 inside the 34-yard line of Florida State on Vaughn's interception. This will happen when you're trying to play catch-up football. Kelly Lowry is trying to help his team come up with big plays. He forces this ball into some pretty good coverage. You see number 47, Bruce Vaughn react. We've seen Vaughn three times now be able to read the receiver, read the pattern, and drive on the football. That was his first interception, but he's played very well all game long. The fifth time that Florida State has turned the ball over, Florida has not turned it over today. You saw Dixon in motion. That's Hampton. He's pulled down and pulled down hard. Isaac Williams, number 45 from Sanford, Florida. There's Vaughn, the man who made the interception. He was the man who had committed the pass interference on the play before. Bruce Vaughn, they said it was a miracle, actually, that he's even playing. He broke his foot a year ago very, very badly, but he's come back and be able to play and play very well. Second and 13, Florida at the Florida State 37-yard line. Wayne Peace. Wayne Peace evades the tackler, shakes loose. Pulled down to the jersey by Henry Taylor, the linebacker. Let's take a look at the key Florida faces on offense. There you're looking at one of them right there, Wayne Peace. He rushed for two touchdowns in the first half and threw for 127 yards. John L. Williams, six carries for 24 yards. Neil Anderson had 10 carries for 66 yards. Third and eight at the 32-yard line. They're on a slot left, wide receiver right. Wayne Peace unloads it. Taken out there by John L. Williams, and he gets inside the 30-yard line. Stopped by Tracy Ashley. The Florida State key defensive people in the first half. Alfonso Carriker, we saw him put some pressure on Wayne Peace there in the first half. He's going to have to continue to do that. Ken Rowe, we saw him hurdle that one player, make a big tackle, big stop on third down. And Lewis Berry, again, he's only punted once for about 40 yards. Not much of a factor as, as we thought the punters would be. Bobby Raymond's going to attempt a 47-yard field goal now. Chriswell will hold for it. Raymond holding, attempting a 47. And it's good. Raymond's field goal is good. Three more points for the Florida Gators as again they cash in the turnover. They lead 26 to 6. Here are the turnovers, the miscues, and the result thereof. Every miscue has resulted in some sort of score by the Florida Gators. The official yardage on the last field goal by Raymond, incidentally, was 46 yards. A 46 yard field goal. Now, this is Chris Perkins kicking off. Snipes, five yards deep in the end zone, will not run it out. Touchback, first and ten at the 20-yard line. Twelve twenty-four left in the third quarter. Here's the situation where Kelly Lowry has got caught twice trying to force the ball downfield. He's going to have to be a little bit more patient 
And if he can't get the ball downfield, get the ball underneath the coverage to a back, to a tight end. Take five or six completions to get the ball in scoring territory. A little bit more patience by Kelly Lowry is necessary. A little trouble on the snap. Lowry takes it and just lunges forward, picks up about a foot, retains possession importantly of the football. Call it no gain, second down and 10 yards to go. McAllister was right there for Florida. We talked about how deep the Florida secretary is playing. Remember, they're protect protecting the lead. Look how deep the safeties are of Florida. They are not going to give up any cheap scores. I like this coaching staff's description of Mark Korf, the linebacker. They said he has a linebacker personality. He is a train wreck looking for a place to happen. <laughs> the axe handle. before he could get rid of it, and Wilbur Marshall is the culprit. Wilbur Marshall, number 88. So you want to be quarterback and play against Wilbur Marshall. This is what you're going to feel. You may not see him, but you certainly will feel him. Kelly Lowry, under pretty good protection. On the backside, Wilbur Marshall. The All-American linebacker, Wilbur Marshall, of the University of Florida. <laughs> I eat some of the whole <laughs> That's Wilbur Marshall's dinner. Snipes going out to a slot left. Kelly Lowry. Gives it inside to Tom Wheeler, his tight end. Out to the 26-yard line. Mark Carf was the man who made the tackle. Fourth down coming up in the punting, and it comes on. The hand is for the Florida defense. Philip, or rather, Lewis Berry in to do the punting. His longest this year has been 52 yards. Sybil and Tony Lilly are back deep. Both former high school quarterbacks. Sybil. At the 33-35, Sybil to the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Gators. And they're leading in this ballgame by a score of 26-6. Little cloudy and overcast here now with 11 minutes left to play in the third quarter. The University of Florida is one of seven Southeastern Conference institutions invited to play in a bowl game, marking the second consecutive year and the third time in the past 10 years that seven of the 10 SEC schools have participated in a postseason classic. At Florida Field in Gainesville, Florida, Lindsey Nelson with Pat Hayden. Florida has the ball. They're leading 26 to 6, and they have it at their own 39-yard line. Wayne Peace, the quarterback, gives it to John L. Williams. He's up back. He moves through across the 45 to the 48-yard line before Ken Rowe comes in from linebacker to make the tackle, along with Pat Milligan. Bobby Bowden, head coach of the Seminoles. He really brought some life into the program, starting in 1977 for four consecutive years. He won this game. However, it has been won by Florida the last two years, and Florida, of course, has a wide margin over the years. The series began in 1958. Didn't look too loose now, but last night he was pretty loose and confident about things. Things have not gone well for him today. Second down, two yards to go at the 48. Hampton, Lorenzo Hampton's got the first down in yards to spare. Still breaking tackles, Lorenzo Hampton on that sideline and in for a touchdown. <laughs> 52 yards. attempt the conversion now. It's 32 to 6 with a conversion attempt coming. Fisrell puts it down. Boot it up and good. 33 to 6. The Florida Gators are leading the Florida State Seminoles. Florida has dominated the line of scrimmage and here you're going to see Lorenzo Ham Hampton behind Jeff Zimmerman and Lomas Brown just break into the open. Football is still a game of blocking and tackling. Florida's doing the blocking, but Florida State is not doing the tackling. Another missed tackle right there. Hampton scoots into the end zone for yet another six points for the Gators. The domination of the offensive line of Florida. Take a close look at number 74, Jeff Zimmerman. 
Number 75, Lomas Brown. As they lead the way, Phil Bromley in the center, they lead the way for Hampton. Again, he's once again the sac secondary. A missed tackle right there by McCrary, 43. A missed tackle right here by number eight, Eric Riley. And great determination by Lorenzo Hampton. On the conversion attempt, there was a flag, but the penalty was against the defensive team, was declined, and so the point stands and is good. 33 to 6 is the score. Coming up, coming up next on most of these sessions, you'll see big college basketball. And it doesn't get any bigger than Indiana and Kentucky, live from Rupp Arena in Lexington. Bobby Knight of Indiana, of course, against Joe B. Hall of Kentucky. That's a battle. It's a very happy Florida bench. The Florida scored on their last six possessions. Remarkable. Chris Perkins is going to kick it off now for Florida. The penalty, the penalty has been assessed on the kickoff, the penalty that uh, occurred on the conversion attempt, so they're kicking the 45-yard line. Unsportsmanlike conduct, the penalty that puts the ball at the 45-yard line. Perkins kicks it out of the lot. Into the seats, two bases. <laughs> Somebody got a free ball. First and 10 at the 20-yard line now. Ground rule double, you call that, right? That's what it is. Now we see if the Seminoles can move the football. They have been turning it over. They've turned it over five times, and five times Florida has capitalized. Kelly Lowry is still the quarterback. But really, it's been Florida State's defense that's put Florida State's offense in the position where they've had to really catch up and throw the football, causing turnovers. Three interceptions by that man, Lowry. Jesse Hester to the right side. Reed G. Thompson to the other side. Lowry's got the ball. Stumble. It'll be marked at the 23-yard line. He picked up three. Doug Drew with the defender. Second down and seven. Nine minutes, 56 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. Gators are leading 33 to six. Florida will play Iowa in the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville on December 30th. Florida State, of course, will play North Carolina in the Peach Bowl also on December 30th. That one will be seen on CBS Sports. Moving to a slot left. Kelly Lowry with the football. Incomplete. Out of the 33 yard line. Hassan Jones could not hang on. When you are leading 33 to 6, your defensive lineman can really tee off, and Kelly Lowry is feeling the wrath of the Florida State front. Here's number 88, of course. Who else would you expect to be there? Wilbur Marshall. After he gets rid of the football, Lowry's hit and knocked down again. Third down play coming now for the Seminoles. It's been a day of third downs for them. Hester and Weegee Thompson are the wide receivers, and there goes Snipes to a slot left. Contact made before the snap. Dan Arnada sort of moved. Contact made immediately. So the penalty is against Florida State. I am out of the offensive left tackle from Dunedin, Florida. Dead ball foul. Illegal One procedure on the flight. Once you're in the three-point stance, you can't move. Defense can. That's why the aggressive guys like to play a little defense. <laughs> Third down and 12 now. Back at the 18-yard line. Hester and Thompson are wide. There goes Snipes to the slot left again. Kelly Lowry, the quarterback, has the ball. Look for Allen, but he was covered. Now tries to give it on a little shovel to Allen. Greg Allen, the man he tried to get it to. Greg Cleveland was putting on the pressure on the punting, and it comes on. The hand is for the Gator defense. Wilbur Marshall, part of that defense, and now the punt formation with Lewis Berry back there to do the kicking. Sibold and Roger Lilly are deep to receive it from Florida. Lilly is at the 45-yard line, gets it up across the 50-yard line. 
And so they'll start the gate as well, just across the 50-yard stripe on that 37-yard punt by Florida State, returns six yards. It's 33 to six, the Gators lead. The girl who became quarterback and homecoming queen, and she said that she couldn't play quarterback because she was too short. You know who her idol was, don't you? Who was her idol? 5'10", me. <laughs> but it's a very thrilling story. Great determination. She ended up becoming the starting quarterback of the high school football team. Five, were you really 5'10"? <laughs> With my shoes on and two pair of socks. The Gators have the ball now first and 10 at the 50-yard line. Leave it on the ground expectedly, and that's Williams carrying, and he gets down there, too. The 41 yard line. Field position is so key in Florida. Actually, this is the fifth time that Florida has started a possession drive in Florida State Territory. Total yards right there. Dominated every facet of the football ga game, and that's just an indication of it. Second and one yard to go for the Gators. Peace stays alive, throws back, and completes it. First and 10 at the 25-yard line to Walter Odom, the tight end. The Dipsy Doodle for Peace. 16-yard pickup on the pass completion. You see this Florida team performing like they're performing today, and you say, well, what did they do earlier? Well, they were tied by Southern Cal. They beat Miami decisively in the opener. They lost to Auburn. They lost 10 to 9 to Georgia. That's it. The rest were victories. Very close game they did have with Auburn as well. It was indeed. Up to the up back is John L. Williams, and he's hit by Chavers, Lenny Chavers. No gain. <laughs> There you are. Be happy. <laughs> when you're down 33 to 6, there's not a whole lot to be happy about. And, smile and be happy. There you go. It's almost Christmas. Second out and 10. Florida's ball at the Florida State 25. And the move was made by Pat Milligan. No flag. Contact was made behind the line of scrimmage. No, no flag. No flag. We have scores of Division I AA games. Quarter final round in the fourth quarter. Western Carolina 14, Holy Cross 14. Berman 14, Boston University nothing in the second quarter. Southern Illinois, the Salukis 13, Indiana State 7 in the second quarter. Division 2 scores, Central State of Ohio 24, North Alabama 10. The ruling by the referee was that that ball was not catchable, and so there was no interference call on the flag because the ball was uncatchable. Third down and 10 yards to go, Wayne Peace. Hit just as his arm started forward. Incompleted pass will bring up a fourth down. It was Carica, Alfonso Carica, who was hanging on the shoulder. That's quite a load to try to carry. <laughs> oh, he's only 6'6", 260 pounds. Peace is 11 for 17, 145 yards today, and this is his last game on Florida Field. Florida State Conversion defense. attempt, a rather field goal attempt coming now. Bobby Raymond is in. This will be a 42-yard attempt with Criswell holding. 42-yarder. It's good. It's his fifth. His fifth of the day. And he ties Brian Clark, who in 1980 made five for the field goal record, a number made in the game at Florida. It'll be the Gators kicking off now. Chris Perkins will kick it off. He's got Roosevelt Snipes center deep. Seven minutes, four seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. Bobby Raymond, who has kicked five field goals here today to tie the Florida record for a number of field goals in the game. They're kicking from the hash mark left here. Chris Perkins sails it downfield. Snipes says that will go one hop across the end line. Touchback, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. 
Tomorrow, the NFL Today kicks off great regional action here on CBS. The Dallas Cowboys take on the dangerous Seattle Seahawks. The Atlanta Falcons face John Riggins and the Redskins, and these are the games. It all starts with the NFL Today. Check the local listings for the game and time in your area tomorrow on CBS Sports. Bob Davis back in at quarterback. Now Kelly Lowry is being rested, and Bob Davis is back in at quarterback for Florida State. Davis started the ball game, was relieved after the Seminoles went behind by 10 points. Leave it on the ground this time. Roosevelt Snipes gets out there across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Alonzo Mitts made the tackle. Florida State's offense never had an opportunity to gain any, any rhythm. Early in the football game, they had bad field position, and Florida jumped up on head 10 to nothing. They never had any chance to get things going, to use the running game and their passing game together, which they've done all season long, and they've been forced to play catch-up all afternoon. Six and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Davis with a quick flip there. Roosevelt Snipes pulled down for a loss of a yard back at the 25-yard line. Sybil made the tackle. He's a former high school quarterback. Third down and five yards to go. Thompson and Hester are the wide receivers. Roosevelt Snipes moved into a slot left. Davis. Completed it, taken by Pete Patton, but he was hit immediately by Wilbur Marshall. Wilbur Marshall made the hit on Patton. Boy, was it a hit, too. The hand is for the Florida defense, as once again, the Seminoles are going to have to punt it. Charlie Pell, head coach of the Gators. Sybil is waiting. He takes it at the 27-yard line. Sybil to the 30-35. To the 40-yard line, it'll be first and 10 at the 40. We have a very special guest here now. I want to talk to you a little while. Tracy Calkins, one of the outstanding amateur swimmers in the world, as a matter of fact. Tracy, you stay busy at the University of Florida? That's right. We get a real good balance of academics, social life, and athletics here at the university. What about our Olympic team now? Is work being done toward getting our Olympic team in shape for next year? Oh, yes. We've had a lot of preparation done the last year, as a matter of fact, and now everybody's really gearing up towards the Olympics. And I think the University of Florida has a lot of potential to have several Olympians on the team. It's taken by Neil Anderson, and he gets across the 40-yard line down to the 43-yard line. Tracy, I know you're from Nashville, Tennessee. I know that, being a Tennessean myself. Whatever got you into the, the idea of swimming and being a swimmer? Well, I got a lot of encouragement from my family, from my brother and sister who started swimming before I did. Good luck to you, Tracy. The very best. Thank you. Tracy Calkins, one of our outstanding swimmers, getting ready for the Olympics next year. Student here at the University of Florida. Florida with the football right now, and it is taken by Wayne Peace. Tops it. It's complete. Taken by Lang, and he is up to the 43-yard line of Florida State. B. Lang made the catch. He's from Miami, Florida, and Ken Rowe made the tackle. He's from Cropwell, Alabama. 14-yard pickup on the play. Some people might feel that Florida is rubbing it in to Florida, in Florida State's defense, but really not. There's four minutes left, and it's still just a third quarter. You still have to run your game plan, still throw the football when the opportunity arises. Wayne Peace has quarterback the Gators all day long. Right in motion back toward the line of scrimmage. That's Lang. Can't get back to it. Second down and 10 yards to go at the 43-yard line. Florida's leading in this ballgame by score 36 to 6 with 3 minutes 51 seconds left in the third quarter. Everything has gone well for Charlie Pell and the Florida Gators this afternoon in the regular season ending game here at Florida Field. 
Tom Petty is the tight end. B. Lang is a wide receiver. Petty's in the slot right in this alignment. In motion back towards the line of scrimmage. Popped out to Dixon, Dwayne Dixon. And it's at the 35-yard line. Tracy Ashley made the tackle on that corner. Steve Bloodworth played a fine game in the first quarter and part of the second. Then he went out of action, and Tracy Ashley moved over after the injury to Bloodworth to his wrist. Tracy Ashley moved over. Normally, he's the backup and strong safety, but he's played the right corner. Rest of the second quarter and here in the second half. Third down, two yards to go at the 35. Neil Anderson, he got the two by stretching out that long live body for the first down. Carrico was hanging on. Carrico, number 76. Hey, mama. The nose guard of Florida, Tim Newton, number 56. He's anchored the front there in the middle for the defensive defensive team. Fine job. Wayne Peace has just marked up another record. He's setting up numbers here this afternoon in this game, in this final game at Florida Field. He's a senior, of course. Lorenzo Hampton stepped out of bounds back at the 31-yard line. Lorenzo Hampton stopped by Tracy Ashley. And the Southeastern Conference Total Offense Division, Wayne Peace has just moved past John Bond of Mississippi State into second place with 6,912 yards. It's been right up front where Florida has controlled this football game today. Here's just a, another pitch to Hampton on the, uh, to the outside. We've seen him run so effectively inside. Another missed tackle by this Florida State team. 38 is Ken Rowe. Although he makes a good play, he doesn't lock up. We've seen a lot of missed tackles by the Seminoles this afternoon. Petty's in the slot right. The line is beyond him. Dixon's wide to the left side. Petty in motion back toward the inside. And Peace fakes one time. Pops down, throws. Dixon! What a catch by Dixon! Reached high, pulled it in, got the feet down. We're covering defensively. The athleticism of Dwayne Dixon. You're going to see Wayne Peace again, a very accurate throw. This is a tough throw because Dixon is well covered. He throws it over a defender. And Dixon has good height. He's 6'1. He goes up to the top where the ball is at its highest peak, catches the ball, knows he's going to get hit, and stays in bounds. A tremendous athletic play by Dwayne Dixon. They picked up 23 yards on the play, and now the Gators are first down and goal to go at the Florida Seminoles, Florida State Seminoles 80 yard line. Hampton inside the five. Second down and goal to go. Ken Rowe coming in to make the tackle. Hampton has carried 10 times for 64 yards in this ball game. See time remaining. It is less than two minutes remaining to be played in the third quarter as Lorenzo Hampton comes off the field from Lake Wales, Florida. Williams and Anderson are the setbacks in there now. Anderson is the tailback in the eye. It's Dixon in motion across. Here's Anderson taking the pitch. Cuts back. Drives down to about the two-yard line, where it'll be third down and goal to go. It was May, Matt, uh, Prince Matt in to make the tackle. Third and goal near the three-yard line. Anderson has carried 13 times for 74 yards. An impressive showing all day long for Charlie Pell's Gators. They had hoped this year to win the Southeastern Conference Championship, something that a Florida team has never done. Well, they didn't miss by much. Right to the goal line. Touchdown! Touchdown! Ashley and Matt made the tackle. Neil Anderson for the touchdown. Two to six. Bobby Raymond is in to attempt the conversion. Now Chris Well will hold for him. And it's good. It is 43 to six. Another look at Neil Anderson as he fights his way into the end zone. He's going to get an excellent block from John L. Williams, number 22, his running mate in the backfield. They're coming right here. 
Watch number 22 Williams. He kicks out of 43 McCrary. Gives, gives Anderson a chance. But he drives into the end zone. Tremendous leg power. Determination of Neil Anderson. But this was a series we saw a little bit of everything. We saw some inside running, some power running by Florida. We saw some outside running with Lorenzo Hampton. We saw him running the outside. We saw Wayne Peace come up with a couple of big passes and a very athletic catch by Dwayne Dixon that really put him in a position to score the six points. And this is what happens when you have all eight cylinders working. Florida moves 60 yards, 10 plays, 353. That'll be Chris Perkins kicking off. Roosevelt snipes his center deep to receive it for the Seminoles. 43 to 6. Snipes in the end zone. All you got to do is cover it and down. It's a touchback. First and 10 to the 20-yard line. These teams uh, had the last three weeks off in preparation for this game. The Seminoles about now must be thinking, what did they wait three weeks for? <laughs> Some people suggest they took four weeks off. <laughs> Florida State has rushed for 50 yards. Florida has rushed for 256 yards. It is still Bob Davis in that quarterback. Motion all the way across. Esther. It's a quick, quick pitch to Big Allen. 27-yard line. Picked up seven. It'll be second down and three yards to go. Patrick Miller made the tackle. Outside linebacker playing behind Alonzo Johnson out there. Clock is running down to 35 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We've got Hester in the slot left. Bob Davis waiting for the snap. Give it to Allen, and Greg Allen gets the first and 10 down to the 33-yard line. Fred McAllister made the tackle. <laughs> Clock is stopped for the first down, of course. Now it started again once the chains have been moved. First 10 at the 32. And that is the end of the third quarter. Our score is 43 to 6. Florida State, Florida's exclusive presentation of CBS Sports. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after a word from your local station. Florida State versus Florida, an exclusive presentation of CBS Sports, is sponsored by the new Chrysler Corporation, moving America ahead with advanced technology. Florida State with the ball, first intent to 32 yard line. He went on the ground this time and move it out to about the 36-yard line. Snipes carrying on the play. Big fan Joe of the North Carolina staff is with us here in the booth, and you, of course, came to see Florida State. That's the team you're going to be playing. Give us an assessment first, though, as a neutral observer about the performance of the Florida team this afternoon. Well, Lindsey, Florida's played a great football game, obviously. They really have it going. The fans, I've never seen a uh, group of fans into a game like this one is this year. Offensively, they are just ripping them up the middle, running the football, and Peace is a really great quarterback. He's durable and strong, and has evaded their rush in crucial situations. He's really turned some bad situations into good situations for Florida. Greg Allen on the carry, moves it up across the midfield marker. But you, of course, are busy in North Carolina getting ready for the Peach Bowl against Florida State. Yes, sir, we are. Florida State, just, you can just forget about what happened today. It's one of those things that happens in football. They are a great football team. Who coming into this game, lost 11 games by a total of four points to excellent football teams. And Bobby Bowen's a great football coach, and they will regroup for us, I'm sure. They got three weeks to prepare for us, and they don't want in their season six and six, which will be the case if they lose to us. So they'll be really fired up, and we better be up to the challenge. Just hang on just a second here now. Here's a pass play that is complete out to the left flat. Out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Jackson with the ball, and um, it's going to be spotted back at the 46-yard line. What, in getting ready, North Carolina getting ready, what concerns you most about Florida State? Obviously, the running attack, two-back attack with Snipes and uh, Allen are two of the finest backs we've seen this year. Uh, their quarterback situation hurt them today. I think the injury has hurt them. They've had some receivers open, but they've been late getting the ball to them and twice resulted in interceptions. 
Well, offensively, they create a lot of problems for us. Right, right now, they're in a one-back set. That creates problems for you. And their running attack, the combination of running and throwing the ball is really creates problems for us defensively. Incompleted right there. Coach Fangio, thank you very much for coming by, and good luck to you, and we'll see you at the Peach Bowl. My pleasure, Lindsay. The Peach Bowl on December 30th, Florida State and North Carolina, and you'll see it on CBS. It is third down and seven yards to go. Florida State has the ball at the Florida 46-yard line. Bob Davis, the quarterback. Intercepted by Florida. And it's Sybil. Roger Sybil, number 25, returns it to the 30-yard line of Florida State. First and 10. Jesse Hester made the stop. Another turnover, another interception. The Florida defense is on a roll. This is their sixth turnover by the Florida State offense. You're going to see Jesse Hester come down. Never, Bob Davis never saw Roger Sibald, number 25. Red Davis jumped on the ball, came up the interception. Big play, another big play for the Florida defense. Six turnovers for Florida State, none for Florida. Now, will the Gators catch this one in as well? They've been doing it all day long. They're leading 43 to 6 in this ball game. Wayne Peace is still the Florida quarterback. He's quarterbacked them all day long. Pitch to the tailback. And Anderson is stopped at the 27-yard line. Ken Rowe made the stop. Gain of three, it'll be second down and seven yards to go. The Florida State offense has not been good on third downs, Lindsay. They've only converted one in ten tries on third down this entire game. For Florida, of course, this is a non-conference game, and the Southeastern Conference has the best season record of any conference in non-league games. Donnie Whiting in at quarterback now. Peace is out, and Donnie Whiting is coming at quarterback. He is a freshman from Titusville, Florida. Whiting, the quarterback, in place of Wayne Peace. Give it to the tailback again. Neil Anderson. There is Peace along the sideline. What a career he's had here at the University of Florida. He has hung up record after record after record. A few more today, as a matter of fact. And for today, he's 14 for 21, 190 yards. And importantly to him, his team is leading 43 to 6. Now Charlie Pell getting some more shock troops into the ball game now. He's got Hunt out, Schultheis out, Henson's in, and Zimmerman's in. Starting the substitution process in the fourth quarter. Here. However, if Charlie Pell elects to get everybody into the game that he has dressed, we're, <laughs> we're going to have trouble. a very interesting <laughs> afternoon because he's got people out there that nobody can identify. <laughs> Oh my. Stay with us following this football game now for basketball, Indiana and Kentucky. A big one, Bobby Knight against Joe B. Hall. Outstanding stars and stay with CBS for college basketball right on to the final four in Seattle. Whiting with the football inside the 20 yard line. Out of bounds at about the 18-yard line. The fun of college football. Freshman Donnie Whiting getting his chance to play here in front of a large crowd at Florida Field. Kind of fun when you get a chance at a big game like this, a big rivalry. He does pretty well for himself. Henderson is the fullback. Short drop for Whiting. Now to hit line. Incomplete at the five-yard line. Eric Riley covering on the corner out there. Second down and 10 to go at the 18. Charlie Pell getting a little refreshment in the Florida sunshine, and it's been a happy day for Charlie Pell. Look at the stats, the game stats, and the advantage that Florida has in almost every area except turnovers. Well, the two critical ones are turnovers, Lindsay, and time of possession. Really, Florida's had the ball nearly twice as long as the Seminoles. Dixon's wide right. Lang is wide left. Hiding with the ball. Keeps it. Quarterback keeper. <laughs> Bumped up to about the 13-yard line. 
Picked up five on the play. Where it'll be third down and five yards to go. John McLean made the tackle for the Florida State Seminoles. It is 43 to six. The highest score for Florida ever against Florida State was 49 to nothing in 1973. Whiting getting a play from the sideline. It has not been such a very good day for nice. the head coach of the Seminoles. Nice, nice man. Hate to see that to happen to anybody. Hampton's the tailback. Henderson's the fullback. Hampton's got the pitch. But he can't go because of a fellow named Alfonso Carriker. 6'6", 260 pounder. He says his biggest thrill was going back to his hometown of Columbus, Ohio twice and participating in a win over Ohio State. Two of them. Seventy-four thousand one hundred thirteen, a new stadium record in attendance here this afternoon. They packed them in for the Florida State Florida game. Conversion uh, field goal attempt coming now, a thirty-two yarder for Bobby Raymond. Thirty-two yarder is up and it's good and it's six for him today and that's a new record for the University of Florida. And the Gators are now leading by a score of forty-six to six. Now to kick off for Florida by Bobby Raymond doing the kicking off. The man who's been kicking field goals is bobbled by Florida State inside the 20-yard line and recovered. It was Billy Allen, but they retained possession. The reaction of Bobby Raymond kicked his sixth field goal, set a Florida record. This is college football. Roger Riley, our statistician, Bill Friel, our spot, are working double time and overtime. A new Florida personal record in field goals for Raymond, 20 in one season. First down and 10 yards to go outside the 21 yard line for the Seminoles. Eric Thomas, the quarterback. Get it off to Allen, Greg Allen with the football. And he got out to the 23, picked up two yards. To tell you a little bit how badly things have gone for Florida State, they've had 11 possessions previous to this one. They ended up in four interceptions, four punts, two fumbles, and one touchdown. Alonzo Mitz is the man injured, number 62, but he's going off under his own power. Eric Thomas, quarterbacking Florida State now. In Lake Park, Georgia, a sophomore, six feet tall, 190 pounder. Second down, eight yards to go. Seminole to the ball in their own territory. Eric Thomas with the ball. Eric Thomas still with the ball. Throws it on the run, diving short catch. Pete Patton. Penalty marker on the play. Referee's flag. Jimmy Harper, the referee. Clipping against Florida State. Well, when you go in bed, everything goes bad. Just one of those days. Eight minutes, 42 seconds remaining to be played in this game. Flipping against Florida State, Marshall came off. Wilbur Marshall came off. Wilbur Marshall came out of the game here in the fourth quarter. He gets a hand from the student section. And from Charlie Pell, the head coach. Boy, if you got one like that, you want to embrace him. Huh? <laughs> You'd also like to keep him for eight or ten years. Yeah, ain't that the truth? Eric Thomas from the goal line. Throw it up. Hester, Hester, Hester. Incomplete and almost intercepted. It was Vaughn, Bruce Vaughn, who almost gathered it in. Third down and 23 yards to go. Tony Lilly's coming off. Tony Lilly, the all-conference. Free safety has come off the field. Being greeted. Fred McAllister, 46, the linebackers coming off. 
These are seniors who are coming off Florida Field, presumably for the last time. Thomas from the end zone. Well, neither one of them could hold it, and both of them might have. That will bring on the punting unit because the Seminoles now will have to give it up. There's McAllister, the linebacker. Had a great career here. They're a happy gang of Gators along that sideline. Why wouldn't you be? Lewis Berry is back there to do the punting. Booms it out. Lily went back in and the punt returned, but Sybil has it there with Lily in front of him. And Sybil has returned it to the 43-yard line. So once again, the Gators get the ball. They get it in good field position, and they're leading in this ball game with 7.53 left by a score of 46 to 6. Stay with us for Indiana and Kentucky coming up after the football game. First and 10 at the 44 now for the Gators. And that is Williams, John L. Williams, struggling his way, blasting his way up to the 44 yard, the 46 yard line. And Bryant Williams made the tackle. McAllister on the right, Marshall on the left, the Florida bench. And here comes some more. Lang is coming out of the ball game. Wayne Dixon is coming out of the game. That's Lang. Charlie Powell is out of greet him. Getting the seniors out of the ball game here now. Ball's at the 46 yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. Donnie Whiting is the quarterback. Handing it off and just blasting up the middle of the 43 yard line. Massey, the ball carrier. Massey carried the ball. As we see a lot of these seniors trot off, Lindsay, this reminds me that many of these players obviously will not go on and play professionally. This is their last game of football. This is a very, very special moments for so many of these seniors. Moments that they'll remember the rest of their lives. At tailback now, James Massey, number 42. And the Florida State seniors, well, they still have a bowl game to kind of redeem themselves and feel a little bit better about their careers. They have nothing to be ashamed of. They played hard, and Florida's a very good football team. Gary Roll just came off the field, number 86. Here is a timeout for Florida. Florida Gators have taken a timeout. We have six minutes, 32 seconds remaining to be played in this game, which has been dominated in every department by the Florida Gators this afternoon. Second and seven, Florida at the 43-yard line of Florida State. Whiting with a pop pass that is dropped. And it's going to be ruled a reception, a fumble, and a recovery by Florida State. A reception by Natil and Tracy Ashley recovering. So Florida State gets the football. He drives a quick pass by Donnie Whiting. Again, the freshman, number 19, drills the ball to Natil. He's hit there. The ball pops loose. And there they are to make the recovery. First turnover of the game. For Florida. Tracy Ashley made the hit, and Brian McCrary was the man who recovered the ball. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. On the option play. And it's a keeper to Eric Thomas. Moves up to the 48-yard line. Let's take a look now at some Division I AA scores. Western Carolina leading Holy Cross 28-21 in the fourth quarter. And Fermont is leading Boston University 21-0. That's in the third quarter. Southern Illinois 20, Indiana State 7 in the third quarter. Central State of Ohio 27, North Alabama 17 in the fourth quarter. Division two, II, Division three, the championship game, Augustana, Illinois 21, and Union of New York 17. That is a final score. Augustana winning the championship. It is taken by Cletus Jones from fullback. He's in Miami, Florida, and stopped by Doug Drew. Cross into Florida territory. But there's a Florida man injured, and members of the training staff are going out as we see Charlie Pell. Don't forget the basketball coming up at the conclusion of this football game. Indiana 
and Kentucky, some of the great college basketball players, one of the great rivalries, Indiana, Kentucky. Those are the starting lineups. Those are some of the ball players you'll see. Blab there for Indiana, marvelous performer. Bowie is back this year. Turpin, of course, with him, the Twin Towers of Kentucky. Jim Master, the great guard from Kentucky, the outside shooter. And so all of that's coming up. But those schools have some tradition now, don't they? Kentucky and Indiana. They have some tradition and they have some rivalry. They don't particularly like each other. Patrick Miller, number 98, coming off the field. Not feeling too well. Thomas with the ball and the pitch. And Roosevelt Snipes uh, gets across the 40 down to the 39 yard line. Vernell Brown made the tackle. Wayne Peace, who has just completed a Florida field career here this afternoon. Great, great career at the University of Florida. He'll be at the East West Shrine game. That'll be on January 7th at Stanford Stadium, and we'll be there. Now, Steve Nicholas is in the ball game. He is the son of golfer Jack Nicholas, sophomore, 6'2, 190 pounder. He's at a wide receiver. Thomas with the ball on the option. Snipes with the pitch, and Snipes has got the ball. Struggles out of bounds at the 32 yard line. Burnell Brown, and him out. Roosevelt Snipes, the man who really didn't have an opportunity to take advantage of his talents here today because they got behind so much they weren't able to get the ball to him in the open field like they had hoped. They had hoped they'd have Greg Allen at fullback and Snipes at tailback and be able to get the ball to Snipes and he'd be able to pick up yardage in the open field and at Allen to be able to capitalize as a fullback. But they got behind so quickly that all of that went sort of for naught. Second down, three yards scored to 32. That's Allen. Greg Allen's got the first down. He can run. Greg Allen, Greg Allen, touchdown, Florida State. <laughs> His 13th touchdown of the year. Florida State, the Seminoles ask for a timeout. The score is now 46 to 12. Although the scoreboard has gone a little awry. The scoreboard's given them 10 points advantage. Here's Bobby Bowden. He's talking about a two-point play. Now, he talked to us about a two-point play. Actually, he's got four of them. But first, we're going to look at Greg Allen, number 26. Now, he can make some people miss here and then break some tackles, as he did right there. They call him Mr. Touchdown for good reason, although he's not been in the end zone enough today for the Seminole fans. It might be too little and too late, but it's something to yell about this late in the ballgame oh, in any sure. case. Sure, but there's Bobby Bowden. He's got four different two-point conversions. He said if it came down to it, he would go for the two because he said he's never had a tie. He didn't have to worry about that today. So let's see what Bobby Bowden has devised for us here in the late afternoon in Gainesville, Florida. Two-point play, of course. Get all you can when you're behind this much, 46 to 12. Eric Thomas, the quarterback, he may be diagramming it on the turf. Hester's in the slot left. Ouija Thompson's outside him. Roosevelt snipes in motion. Thomas knocks to the right side and nobody there. Greg Thomas, Greg uh, Allen for the two-pointer. Greg Allen for the two-pointer. Well, it worked perfectly. Well, Bobby Bowden felt it would. They put Snipes in motion. You see he there, him to the left. A little screen to number 26, Greg Allen. Florida had a full-on blitz. There's no one there to pick up Allen. He catches it, dances in the end zone for two points. So it is 46 to 14. Now keep in mind that on December 24th, you'll be seeing the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. Lance McElhenney from SMU is the quarterback. It'll be SMU in Alabama. Lance McElhenney, all he has had to do is win, and he's won a lot since he's been at SMU. The tailback tandem. Jeff Atkins, the freshman, and Reggie Dupard. Boy, they are, are exciting. Here, take a look at Jeff Atkins. He is the freshman tailback. Here's Dupard. This is against Texas. 
They'll be playing the Crimson Tide, the Red Elephants of Alabama. Ray Perkins in his first year as the successor to Paul Bear Bryant as head coach and director of athletics. And that's Walter Lewis, who had an outstanding year, one of the great quarterbacks. Here's the kickoff. Try the onside kick. Sibal with the ball. Roger Sibal took the short kickoff and returned it inside the 30-yard line. Sibal, a former high school quarterback. And here's the play, an onside attempt by the Seminoles of Florida State. The ball glances right into Roger Sabal's hands, number 25. Then he cuts to the outside, has an opportunity, really, to go, go the distance. Picks up a couple of blocks as just a kicker and one other defender there. Kicker gets knocked down. Sabal cuts back inside. He is finally tackled, but not after a big play by the Florida team. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Greg Allen's 32-yard touchdown run a moment ago for Florida State was the longest TD run this season for SFU. FSU. Hand off to James Massey. Massey tried the left side, got nothing. He was hit over there by Tracy Ashley. Let us make note of the fact that Pat Hayden has left the booth now and he's making his way downstairs. We are hopeful that at the conclusion of this game we can get some comments from the Florida Gators who've had such an outstanding performance here this afternoon from Coach Charlie Pell and some of his outstanding players. Whiting, Donnie Whiting is the quarterback. Whiting's got the ball rolling and looking. Throwing on the run. And he completes it. Down near the 15, about the 16-yard line. It is Gary Roll. Gary Roll from Miami, Florida. Gathered it in. First and 10 at the 16-yard line. A 14-yard pickup. So the Gators retain possession. They are leading by a score of 46 to 14. Three minutes, 40 seconds left to play in the game. Whiting, the quarterback. Hands it off to his tailback. Neil Anderson getting it down there to the 11 yard line. In about five, it'll be second down and five yards to go. Kim Mack made the tackle. Gators are driving toward another. Here in the late afternoon in Gainesville, Florida. Gators came into this game with a record of 7-2-1. and one. Tied Southern Cal, lost a close game to Auburn, and lost 10-9 to nine to Georgia. That's all. It's been an outstanding season. Defeated Miami on their season's opener. Fighting, rolling, and looking, and keeping in the 10-yard line. And it'll be marked at the 6-yard line. Might be a first down. It's very close. Alfonso Carriker and Isaac Williams made the stop. It is marked out there about the seven yard line. So it'll be third down and less than a yard to go. Gators will try to pick it up here with 2.23 left on the clock. Fighting with the ball and rolling and looking and pumping and keeping. And touchdown for Whiting. Took it rolled out, took it into the end zone. It's the third touchdown scored by Florida quarterbacks today. We have a conversion attempt coming. It's 52 to 14 right now. Conversion. And it's good. Picked there by Bobby Raymond. One more point, 53 to 14. So look again at Whiting as he takes the handoff and comes rolling and looking. It's an option pass or run. He looks, doesn't find anybody open, sees a lot of daylight. Now, he's hit about the two-yard line, but he simply lowers his head and barrels in there from that point on. And there he goes for the touchdown. So the Florida Gators now are leading 53-14 to 14 with two minutes and 12 seconds left to play in this game on Florida Field. Five 
Bobby Raymond kicking it off and is taken at the 10 yard line. Return to the 15. Billy Allen carrying and he is across the 20 and pulled down about the 22 yard line. And there is Whiting who scored the touchdown, the quarterback who came into the ball game. Incidentally, the 53 points is the highest score for Florida ever against Florida State. The previous half, 49-0 in 1973. Our thanks to Florida State Director of Athletics, C.W. Hootie Ingram, and to head coach Bobby Bowden and his staff, and to SID Wayne Hogan, the University of Florida Director of Athletics, Bill Carr, head coach Charlie Pell and his staff, and SID John Humanick, and Assistant uh, Director of Athletics, Norm Carlson. Florida State with the ball first and 10 at the 21 yard line. A pitch taken by Roosevelt Snipes and he gets about five. Goes out of bounds at the 26 yard line. Fred McAllister made the tackle. Clock is running. One minute 45 seconds remaining to be played in the game. The Florida Gators leading by a score of 53 to 14. Eric Thomas, the quarterback. Florida State has used three quarterbacks today. Thomas with a late pitch. Roosevelt Snipes goes out of bounds at the 29 yard line. Written out of there by the Florida defense led by Randy Clark. Taken to the inbounds marker and spotted at the 29 yard line. Florida State bench and it has not been a very happy place today. It's not been a great deal to yell about. Florida State came into the ball game with a record of six and four. But they had missed a perfect season by only ten points. Lost two games each by a score of 17-16. Won the opener from East Carolina 47-46. Thomas sets and looks and pumps and it's complete. Taken by Patton, Pete Patton, the receiver, number 96. McAllister made the tackle. First down and 10 yards to go for the Seminoles. Florida 53, Florida State 14. and throwing long way downfield Hester's down there incomplete no marker simply an incompletion 41 seconds left to play in the game Vito McKeever was covering defensively second and ten at the 41 yard line University of Florida with an impressive performance which should improve their ranking in the wire service polls our service polls now, of course, continue on until after the bowl games in anticipation of the national championship. Florida has never finished in the top ten. One would have to say that their chances appear very good to do that this year. Thomas, handing it off to Allen. Greg Allen, number 26. Allen up to the 48-yard line. Mark Korf made the tackle. A man from Pasadena City College in California. See the clock running. Twenty seconds left to play in this game. Third down and three yards to go. Some of the records are being announced to the crowd. We've had a number of them statistically this afternoon that we've passed along the time of their occurrence. Thomas, crowd's counting off the clock. Thomas still got the ball, throws it, and it's incomplete. That'll stop the clock with three seconds left. Ouija Thompson, the man for whom it was intended. Ouija Thompson. Charlie Pelt's getting the ride already. The clock has not run out, but they are anticipating that it would on that play. So Charlie's going to get a second chance. He's getting him back off the field now because Florida State simply has to snap the ball. That's what you call a dry run. They just wanted to see if they could get Charlie up there and move him out on the field. Now they get him up ready to go again. That's what you call at the ready, but it's on the sideline. Clock starts on the snap, three seconds. Gators leading 53 to 14. Thomas with the ball, and time has run out. If that ball ever comes down, this game is over. 
Incomplete. The game is over on the incompletion. Rennell Brown back there, and he's headed off his hands. The game is over. Charlie Pell gets the ride. His team dominated the Seminoles here this afternoon by the final score of 53 to 14. Bobby Bowden coming across the sideline there now, looking for his adversary to shake his hands. We're going to be back here with Wilbur Marshall, the great defender for the University of Florida, in just a moment, so stay with us. Final score once again, the Gators 53 and Florida State 14. Once again, the final score, the Florida Gators 53 and Florida State 14. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Jesse Hester for Florida State and Wilbur Marshall for the University of Florida. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen fields. The seniors are on the field. And now let's go down, and uh, Pat Hayden's going to talk to one of those seniors. Let's go down to Pat Hayden. Thank you very much, Lindsay. I am here with Wilbur Marshall, the Chevrolet most valuable player. Wilbur, could the defense have played any better than they did today? I don't think so. We played pretty close. We played pretty tight. And I think that uh, the young guys showed that they can play a little team ball with us. And uh, the older guys have made it sweet for us. Wilbur, you're a senior. It's your last game here at Florida Field. What kind of emotion did you have going through your mind? I just feel like crying right now. It's just been a long time. and. Uh, Four years, and I love it. I love the people. The people here are great. Thank you, Wilbur. Now we'll go back up to Lindsey Nelson. All right, Pat Hayden, that's what college football is all about. You come, you stay four years, and then you move along to something else. We'll be back in just a moment. Executive producer of college football, Kevin O'Malley. Florida, Florida State, produced by Rick LaCivita. Florida, Florida State, directed by Robert Fishman. Associate producer, Craig Silver. Field technical manager is John Pumo. And these are all the people who have made this telecast possible here from Florida Field, our last regular season game, and we are extremely proud of our technical crew who have brought you these games throughout the season and who have made it possible for us to bring them to you as well. Be sure and stay tuned now for Indiana and Kentucky coming up shortly. The big basketball game. Be sure to stay with us for scores and highlights with Brett Musburger and Eric Persigan in New York. Once again, the final score, 53 to 14, Florida. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. This is CBS.